Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to night three of the Great American Boxing Bash here at the Castleton Banquet and Conference Center in Windham, New Hampshire. Make some noise, ladies and gentlemen. Getting tonight's competition started officially in just a few moments. However, before we begin, we ask that you please rise as we honor the United States of America with the playing of our national anthem, courtesy of DJ Jen Cruz. So proudly we held at the twilight as we made whose broad stripes. Tonight's competition started. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gray Johnson, and I am joined today by, with Scott Sullivan for Boston Boxing Promotions. This is night number three at the Castleton in Winham, New Hampshire. My name is Gray Johnson, joined by Scott Sullivan at the desk. How Scott, you we should have How a very uh, fun uh, evening of 10 professional bouts. Oh yeah, these are gonna be good ones. I mean, if we go off of history, the last two fights this over here at this venue have been amazing. It's been a very uh, lively atmosphere they here. They say the third time's the charm. I don't know how it could be better, but we'll see. Absolutely, so we have 10 fights this evening. Our main event is gonna be for the WBA, NABA, US welterweight title. It's gonna be between Brandon the Cannonberry of West Forks, Maine, taking on Travis Castellone of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. You're also gonna see fighters like Amanda Pavone, Ray Oliveira Jr., Chris Jacobs, uh, Danny Robles from Ventura, California, Cody Kaboski, Josh Alvarado, and Jordan Yanton making his professional debut as well. So it's gonna be uh, a pretty fun one tonight, guys. Hey, we're gonna kick things off uh, with a uh, four round fight. Actually, every fight except for the main event today will be uh, scheduled for four rounds. The main event is scheduled for 10. Entering the ring now uh, in the blue corner is Jahir Everson. Comes from Boston, Massachusetts. This is his professional debut. And coming out to let the bodies hit the floor, a little drowning pool, taking me back to high school. It's gonna be Danny the Dog Robles. And once again, to bring up history, we've we've learned in the last few weeks that these guys take their entrance music seriously. That's really how they're feeling. Absolutely, I mean, the ring entrance is <laughs> truly part of the, uh, the whole experience. Uh, Danny Robles from Ventura, California from the Knuckleheads Gym with Joe Haas Janik as his trainer. 6-0-1, four knockouts, five foot nine. Turned pro in uh, 2018. Nickname is The Dog. Uh, only had a couple of amateur fights, really jumped into the pro game. Still, still learning on the job. Uh, 
managed by Chris J, who uh, had his one and only professional fight, also in a Boston Boxing Promotions ring. Uh, Danny has a big power featherweight, and uh, they're saying right after this fight, they really want to start stepping him up. They're looking for other undefeated fighters, and uh, you know, we'll see how he does today. He obviously doesn't want to overlook Shahir Everson, but uh, getting himself up to that magic number of uh, seven wins, the, 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 the phone is going to start to ring more. I mean, Danny showed that he has potential to possibly get to the next level. We'll just have to see how he looks tonight. He looked great in his last outing. He looked very strong, composed, so we'll see how he does tonight. Should be good. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We've got 10 bouts on tap for you tonight. All 10 of tonight's fights oh. are fought under the jurisdiction of the New Hampshire Boxing and Wrestling Commission. Presiding this evening is your chairman, Bobby Steven, and the one and only, the incomparable, Art Nolan. Your three officials at ringside, your three judges will be John Madfis, Martha Tremblay, and Eddie Scunzio. Timekeeper Ken Volovic, your ringside physician is Dr. Brian Clausen, and your referee for this opening contest will be Leo Gerstel. This opening bout is scheduled for four rounds in the junior welterweight division. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Sporting red trunks coming to us from Boston, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, John Ellison. And his opponent standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right. Wearing white trunks with blue trim. Coming to us all the way from Oxnard, Ventura, California. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny the Dog Rubens. Three round junior welterweights. All right, guys, here you see Danny the Dog. Danny the Dog Robus from Ventura, California, looking to get to that, that 7 0 and 1 mark. And standing in his way is uh, the very unknown J Jahir Everson from Boston, Mass. Uh, very late replacement, so I can't tell you much about him other than that he is uh, taking this fight. Uh, brave to get in the ring against a guy like Danny Robles, a proven power puncher. Last fight was two weeks ago in this venue. Scored a 30 second, uh, 34 second TKO. Let's see how he does here today. Starts off with a big powerful jab, and you can already see there's a bit of a size difference between these two. Robles in great shape. He might want to go to the body. Oh, and he catches Everson right off the top of the head early. Yeah, all Robles has to do is stay calm, work his jab, and should be a quick oh. one. Everson already caught off the top there with big hooks. You could, those were very loud. But to his credit, stays up on his feet. But Danny's chasing after him. I like that Danny's being patient here. Even though he does have the New, uh, New Hampshire knockout record of uh, 13 seconds. Uh, and that was more of a jab that put him down. That was a couple couple light taps there. Everson was just really off balance right there. I think he, I think it's really the accumulation of blows he's already taken. He wants to continue though. But yeah, you can just tell this is a uh, this is a guy that it probably doesn't have a lot, ton of experience in the ring against a guy like Danny, very hungry. Oh, uh, oh, big one too there. Caught him hard, and that is going to be it. And that's what Danny can do against a guy. But not a lot of experience yeah, against guy, a motivated fighter like Danny the Dog. He has pretty good, uh, pretty good technical foundation, and I mean he has really heavy hands. So you, you you combine those two things with someone with not much experience, it's going to be a quick time, a quick night every time. Yeah, not a, not a surprise. 105 of the first round, 65 seconds. So credit to Everson for for at least hanging in there for a little bit. But that, those last two punches really finished him off hard. And I think that his team knows this is, you know, they got to start looking for better opponents. They got to start looking for guys with undefeated records like Danny and start hunting for better opportunities. Because um, you can only come here uh, so so often and pick up wins. Now they have to look for wins with meaning. Yeah, like you said, he's, he's doing what he has to do at this stage of his career, but like you said, it's time to step up. Yeah, and I mean, this is, you know, like I said, he was uh, back in the ring two weeks, uh, uh, in the ring two weeks ago, back in the ring here today. Uh, it's, it's, it's quantity, I think, right now is the, uh, what there, is the goal, but now it's time to look for that quality. So, uh, but we know Danny, Danny can punch. Great stoppage tonight. Looks fantastic in wonderful shape. 
Uh, but yeah, they've got to start hunting for uh, some big game now and really see if they can step up in this 120, 126-pound uh, division. Yeah, the, the positive takeaway for Robles here is that he's showing that he is ready for that next level. Oh, absolutely. Really rep repped the, uh, the Knuckleheads Gym in Ventura very nicely today. Did an excellent job. Five seconds of round number one. Your winner via knockout from Oxnard, Ventura, California, Danny the Dog Rubles. All right, congratulations, Danny the Dog. Quick work tonight, 105 of the first round. And he is the first of two Knuckleheads gym fighters that will be in action. You can see on the replay here, Scott, uh, we're showing it. Um, here, uh, you can see, I think right from the beginning, you can just tell two different levels of class here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Robles really kept his composure, did what he had to do, placed his shots nicely, took his time, and, I mean, he did and what he had to do. You can see off that first knockdown, it's more of a glancing jab. I think it was really the punches before that were uh, giving Everson some trouble there. So, big size difference, too, between these two guys. And Danny was able to really rock him fairly quickly. Impressive. And then here is the finishing flurry. Big, big hook to the head. That whenever, whenever your left hook catches the guy on the left side of his face, that means he turned his head the wrong way. And it's never gonna yep. it's never gonna end well when you when you turn your head into a left hook. So let's go to the next fight, guys. We are one one after another here. Fight number two, it's Bantamweights, four rounds, two guys making their professional debuts. Not a whole lot, we know a lot about these two, so this should be a pretty interesting fight. In the ring right now, it's Dan Cormier. No, not the former UFC heavyweight champion. This is Dan the Hamburglar Cormier from uh, Providence, Rhode Island. He's got that uh, iconic McDonald's character on his, uh, on his shirt. 8 and 10 in MMA, so this is his boxing debut. Uh, last time out, fought on a Bellator card, so he's a pretty decent level at MMA. We know at the very least he's competitive. He's competitive. And you can he's never count out a guy who isn't scared to fight. 100%. And you know he's probably very comfortable fighting on the feet for sure. Now Josh is from my hometown actually. I've seen him in the gym before. He's a pretty good fighter. Okay. So we'll, we'll see what he could do tonight. Yes, Josh uh, Alvarado coming from New Bedford, Massachusetts. I'm sure he's very excited to make his pro debut. Came in tonight weighing in at 122 pounds. Cormier 120 and a half. Yeah, we don't know a ton about Alvarado. Uh, I mean, have you, I'm sure you've seen Alvarado in the gym. What can we yeah. expect from him? I mean, he's he has good tech, a good solid fundamental foundation. Um, a lot of times, when you're making your pro debut, your fundamentals kind of go out the window. So, as long as he avoids doing that, he should be okay. So we're just waiting now for uh, Josh Alvarado to enter. <laughs> Certainly seems to have some fans here today. Pro debut is always exciting for any boxer, of course. Well, we know Dan Cormier has it because, you know, he was a UFC heavyweight champion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It's not, not this guy. This is not, yeah. <laughs> I keep... thought he lost weight. Yeah, he went on a say, diet. He, he lost weight, and he's white now. Um, no, yeah. but that is, uh, again, Providence, Rhode Island, bantamweight Dan Cormier, uh, a Bellator veteran. So well, they have the same haircut. They do have the same haircut, for sure. But it is not that Dan Cormier. <laughs> So again, we're just waiting on uh, the entrance for uh, Josh Alvarado, repping New Bedford, the whaling, the whaling city, I guess you call it. Yeah, it hasn't been that for a while. I was going to say, yeah. it hasn't been that for a while. There's still some cobblestone streets over there, though, like there was when the whaling industry was the richest thing to do in the world. <laughs> Certainly, but I'd say it's still one of the biggest towns in Massachusetts. Uh, it's pretty, still a lot of people living there. I Ish. live there, so Ish. that's important. Yeah, that's important. Scott is from New Bedford. <laughs> And here comes Josh Alvarado now, I believe. Maybe he's waiting to get himself revved up here, making his opponent wait in the ring. That's a classic tactic. Again, we want to thank you for watching night number three of the Great American Boxing Bash here at Boston Boxing Promotions at the Castleton, Winham, New Hampshire. I'm Gray Johnson, joined by Scott Sullivan. This is the ten, uh, second of 10 professional fights tonight. And to let you know, guys, uh, uh, we're going to be back here on uh, September 24th, right in this venue. And we'll be streaming live and free, of course, 
on the YouTubes. Here comes Josh now. Josh entering the ring. Again, this is going to be a four-round bout. Uh, super bantamweights. You can see in his uh, Josh coming in the in his corner is uh, Carlos Alvarado. So should be going. Now let's get to Pete Zimbor with our introductions for this fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is scheduled for four rounds in the Super Bantamweight Division. Your referee for this contest will be Jackie Morell. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Sporting solid black trunks tonight, making his professional boxing debut from Providence, Rhode Island. They call him the Hamburglar. Dan Cormier. And his opponent, standing across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right, wearing black trunks with white trim. Tonight, also making his professional boxing debut. He comes to us from the whaling city of New Bedford, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, John Alvarado! Four rounds, super bantam weights. I guess we got some fellow New Bedford residents or fans of Josh Alvarado. Nice little applause uh, for him. The baby goat, it says on the trunks there. Yeah, I don't know what that's about, but there's nice trunks. Very, very Definitely nice trunks. Those are like Mayweather-esque type trunks. Very, uh, they look custom made. Dan Cormier doing some, uh, some squatting in the corner there to get ready. But this will be the first of four rounds. Hey, here we go. Round number one, Jackie Morell, your referee. And I can tell you right off the bat, just looking at uh, Dan Cormier's stance, uh, definitely looks like he knows how to stand and jab. Yeah, you, you don't usually see that from a MMA fighter, not to say it in a bad way, but they're used to having to account for feet and takedowns, so their stance is usually a little different than a traditional boxing stance, but Cormier looks well prepared. It looks like he, he at least has been in the gym prepared for this. Uh, both guys, uh, the tentative start here, trading jabs. This is what I expected from Alvarado. This, he's very, you know, good, fundamentally nice jab, crisp punches, short, tight defense. So far, both guys pot shotting. Failing each other out. Both looking pretty good right now. It's, it's, you know, no one really has the edge right now. Nice right hand there by Alvarado. Grazed his chin. Uh, both guys tied up on the inside. Trade, trade a few shots before then. I'm sure there's gotta be nerves for both guys here. Oh, that was actually a pretty nice uh, left hand there by Cormier. Both guys having some nice, uh, nice moments uh, so far in this round. Cormier with a wild swinging left that misses. Alvarado appears at this stage to have a slight advantage in, in the shortness of his punches, which is helping him out a lot right now. It's giving him a slight edge, I believe. Cormier certainly does know how to throw a jab, at least. He, he, he's looking really good as well. Both guys in excellent shape here. Again, these are super bantamweights, four rounds. A commenter <laughs> says, this ring looks huge. Correct. This is a very uh, large ring. I probably should have asked what the measurements were, but yes, this is definitely a much bigger ring. And they're, they're also not, they're not Deontay Wilder either, so these are, these are Bantamweights, smaller guys. Yes. Oh, wow. Uh, these, and, they're, and they're wearing eight ounce gloves, uh, but I've been told these, it feels like you get hit by a six ounce glove. It's definitely a puncher's glove. It feels bare fist. Nice there, one two on the top of the head there by Alvarado. Very competitive round here. Yeah, especially if you've been watching our streams when we were at Southpaw Boxing and Fitness, that gym was, I think, about 16 feet. And this, so it's, if you're watching this, this is significantly bigger. 
I'd imagine this has got to be probably around 20 feet if I had to make a visual estimation. Could be wrong. I apologize if I'm wrong. Nice one-two there off the top there by Alvarado. Warning uh, sign to end the first round here. Cormier got a few shots into the body. Very competitive round, though. Uh, nice back and forth action for both guys. Very honest effort. Yeah, that was surprisingly for two guys making their pro debut. Very good composure oh, from both guys. I, I mean, saw no nervous energy in there. And not surprising. I mean, at least in Dan Cormier's, uh, uh, you know, from his vantage point, he's been in 18 MMA fights. I'm sure he's been in plenty of rowdy crowds. I'm sure Alvarado might have a little bit of nerves. I mean, going from the amateurs to the pros, it's a big jump. And you see Dan Cormier here with Jose Santos out of 401 Boxing in Providence, who I fought a lot of his fighters back in the day, and he's a very one of the best, best all-around trainers around. And then Josh also has a very good corner over there from New Bedford, so it's no surprise that these guys are looking good technique. Absolutely. Good everything, nice, calm. It's a good fight. It's oh, a yeah. really good fight. Definitely. It's nice when you got two guys just trying to get started in great shape and uh, willing to put themselves out there. Uh, thank you, Lefty Nero Productions, for uh, for saying thank you for the stream. By the way, it is 20 feet inside. I love my uh, great, excellent visual estimation. I'm just gonna not you know, pat myself on the back there. And uh, 20 foot foot, uh, 24 foot total if you count uh, the ropes and the hardest part of the ring, the ring apron. So starting round number two here. And hello to you, to the better half of David Tubbs. Uh, we wish you guys were here. We're keeping Chris J in line. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Hope you're enjoying the streams. Nice overhand shot there by Cormier. It's like Dan, Dan Cormier did not come in here to be a B-side. Uh, no, no, he he's trying to win this. He he didn't. He knows he's supposed to be the opponent, but he's a live underdog. But I like I like Alvarado how he's looking. He's looking. He's look. I, I wasn't expecting him to look this good in his in his first pro fight. But he he's looking good. Nice nice little nice little left hand there by Alvarado. There's another. There's a count, shot lead lead left by Cormier, and he gets in a right hand. Let me tell you, Dan Cormier also having some success here. Yeah, Cormier. He's not taking no for an answer. He gets hit. He comes right back. He doesn't let. The judges remember what Alvarado just did. He gets hit with a good combo. He makes sure he comes right back. Been a fun fight so far, so far, guys. Again, this is uh, fight number two of ten. Third night of the Great America Boxing Bash here at the Castleton in Wyndham, New Hampshire. My name is Gray Johnson, joined here by Scott Sullivan. In the ring is Dan Cormier in the black and Josh Alvarado in the black with the, I guess you call it the white fur. Ooh, nice shot there. By Alvarado. Keep working. Get the body there. Be me in there. Mean machine. Mean machine. Mean machine. Oh, oh. Sit on there. Put him on. There you go. I'll tell you, Cormier has been uh, coming forward. <laughs> he is not afraid to trade, man. Keep working. You winning the round. He's definitely giving Alvarado some work in there. Keep working. Nice short right hand by Alvarado yeah. on the inside. Good counter shot. He needs to do more of that. Thank you, Gus, Gus Nash, for your fine words. <laughs> nice overhand right there by uh, Alvarado. Alvarado's picking it up now. He is. I think that I think Cormier is. Uh, you see him tying up now. I think those are some of the best shots Alvarado's had in this fight so far. Warning bell for the end of the second round. We got 10 minutes, 10 seconds left. And again, pretty competitive round. I think you have to maybe edge Alvarado there, but again, it's it's both guys having moments. This, this is uh, an, this not is easy on the judge. Yeah. yeah, the judges got a tough one on their hands. Cause I don't know, I, it could be two rounds to nothing for either guy. It could be one, one, it, 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 this is a tough fight. Again, guys, we appreciate you uh, watching out there streaming. Live and free on YouTube. Thank you for your support. We appreciate it. By the way, listen, we got another show coming up September 24th. 
If you're in the New, New England area, you want to get your tickets now because seeing boxing live, nothing beats it. We're going to have talent like Alejandro Polina, Nick Molina, Kevin Walsh, uh, Nate, Nate Balakin, Michael uh, Bolger and his Hollywood good looks, Sean Bay, the Castleton Banquet Conference Center in Winham, New Hampshire. Tickets are on sale now, BoxingNH.com. That's September 24th. Fall Brawl comes to New Hampshire. All right, guys, round number three of four Bantamweights. Josh Alvarado of New Bedford and Dan Cormier, the Hamburglar of Providence, Rhode Island. I think Alvarado's out pointing him a bit with the accuracy, but Cormier is really outworking him right now. I agree. Start uh, start of the third round already. We're seeing Dan uh, Cormier really push this fight. And I'll tell you right now, regardless of who wins and who loses this fight, both of these guys are going to get phone calls again. Uh, oh, nice, nice knee left break. hand by Alvarado. Good, well timed there. Uh, Cormier trying to go to the body. We haven't seen a lot of body shots in this fight. It's nice to see a young fighter like Alvarado land a big punch and not go crazy. And stay the other calm. lead left there by Alvarado, Scott. His fans are up on their feet. They like what they're seeing here in round three. Now if he can just put his punches together in combos. He's, I mean, he's doing a nice job landing one at a time here, timing his shots, but you know, volume is what's gonna really win you rounds. Especially when you got a guy that's just bowling forward and just trying to work off of pure numbers, you got to answer that back because the judges could be scoring his aggression. Absolutely. Cormier seems to be smothering himself a lot more in round three. As uh, Cormier bullied, bowled uh, Alvaro out of the corner there. Nice body work by Cormier there. Alvarado could have this fight in the bag if he just does what he's doing, but just does a little more of it. Like right now. It's been a very, uh, <laughs> both guys. And here comes Cormier to answer back. It's been a good round. This is another round. I, I had it Alvarado up until yeah, now. Yeah, I was going to say, but it's Cormier really pushing him here. And here comes Cormier right back. Alvarado up. needs to not be in that crouch. He's not doing himself any favors. He's given Cormier his only chance when he, does, when he stops. But unfortunately, he's stopping a lot right now. Yeah. He wants to be pumping that jab, keeping Cormier at bay. And you know, this is how Cormier could, may have stolen that round, uh, Scott, even though it was a really good start uh, for Josh Alvarado. Yeah, Alvarado definitely had the first two minutes of that round. But and, Cormier yeah. came back in the last minute. It's really made it a dogfight in the last minute there. And a lot of the thing is, is a lot of times the judge remember what happened at exactly. the end of the round, not what happened for the most of the round. I'll tell you right now, these are excellent judges. Martha Tremblay, John Madfis, and Eddie Scunzio. They've seen a lot of fights in their uh, careers. These aren't, uh, these aren't uh, newbies to the sport. So it'll be interesting what they're favoring for sure. Uh, is, again, both guys have nice moments, but uh, I, I think it's not clear cut rounds. So it'll be interesting to see if this ends up going to the scorecards inevitably. And in a four round fight, a, a, a swing here or two can really uh, make a big difference, even if the rounds are close. See so yeah, you guys, last uh, fourth and final round coming up. Excellent competitive uh, super bantamweight fight between Josh Alvarado and Dan the Hamburglar Cormier. I don't like to be this guy, but can we score 10 10 rounds? <laughs> there might be three of them. All right, them. Teddy Atlas. We'll see about that. Uh, well, the, te the Memorial Teddy Atlas 10-10 round. I'll do Teddy go. Atlas 10-10 rounds. I just won't get as excited as Teddy <laughs> Atlas when I'm talking. John Ferrara says this will be a draw if Cormier takes round four, in his opinion. 
I think that's a pretty fair, uh, pretty fair opinion. This has been a very close fight. I'd like to see this one again. Yeah, very, these very, guys are very evenly matched. This is this is really good matchmaking right here. Absolutely. Good skill level from both guys. They should be uh, whatever happens. They should be both be proud of this effort. Oh, Cormier knocked out the mouthpiece. Cormier just doesn't care what he gets hit with. He just keeps coming and working. Now, he's a bulldozer. I think he's uh, I think he's used to getting hit in MMA. <laughs> so I think this is nothing. If Cormier wants to put this in the bag, he needs to just work nonstop for the rest of this fight. Uh, yeah, he, I he, think beat him on volume. He just stole the momentum a little bit with knocking out the mouthpiece. He needs to keep it up because Alvarado... Alvarado might come back in the second half of the round here. I'll say this: I think Alvarado's technique is crisper, but his Cormier shots are—you know—they come they're, they're shoulder shots. But the volume of Cormier is what might win him this fight. Exactly, Alvarado's landing the cleaner punches, so to speak, but Cormier is just outworking him at this stage. Yeah. Oh, Cormier uh, slips there I, again. It's a—it's uh, a little bit of awkwardness there. But I'll say this, I think he's putting out, uh, the output from him has been higher this round from Alvar uh, than Alvarado. Yeah, this is a Cormier round right now. This is the, the most clear cut round, I think, in the fight. For the Hamburglar, I agree. Great, great fight though. This is, uh, again, sometimes you get these little hidden gems on an undercard like this, second fight of 10. Uh, and it's great when you can see two guys really well matched. Nice shot there by, uh, by the baby goat. Alvarado. See, Alvarado has really nice movement, good defense, but he's sitting on the inside too long, and that's why he ends up getting caught with punches. Absolutely. But other than that, when he's on the move, he's, he's really good. He's looking really good. He just needs to get a little busier here. He doesn't have much time left. Oh! Another overhand there, His mouthpiece. and the mouthpiece comes out again. We're gonna have to see, uh, wait for a lull in the action, I think, before Jackie Morrell uh, puts that mouthpiece back in, or if he even noticed. I'm not quite sure if he saw it. Now he sees it, he calls time. Um, I think you're gonna have to get a warning now for Alvarado, he's lost the mouthpiece twice in one round. I don't think he'll take a point, but he's saying, I think he's saying one more time, if that mouthpiece comes out, you will lose a point. Alvarado needs to just swing for the fences here, try to steal this round. Like I said, for an MMA guy, Daniel Cormier, excellent effort tonight. Awesome, both men nice trading at the bell. Great four-rounder. That is what it's all about. That's what club fighting should be. Great effort from both guys. Yeah, jo Alvarado really, really did what he had to do at the end. Yeah. You love to see a guy bite down, and he knows he has to finish strong. Yep, Alvarado making New Bedford proud, Cormier making Providence proud. I'd love to see this one again, no matter what the result is. Great little fight on this undercard. I think the Hamburglar made some fans tonight here in uh, Winham, New Hampshire. That was a good one. Gonna have to see what it looks like when we get to the cards. I can see people in the chat also enjoyed this one. Thank you guys for hanging in with us. Hey, we got eight more fights tonight. I hope they're as good and, uh, and as competitive as this one. That'd be nice. So uh, yeah, we, we uh, that was a good one. And we're going to be uh, joined now, as we wait for the decision, we're going to be joined on commentary by professional fighter, a man who was here not too far long ago, Kyle Cusick. How's it going, man? Hey, thanks for having me, guys. Good thanks for see popping you, in. Thanks for Good popping in. Good to see you, sir. I've never, oh, heard of this. I've never heard of this guy before. <laughs> I don't know who he is. Definitely, definitely, never uh, called one of my fights nah, never, before. Never called this guy. <laughs> Why is he sitting so close <laughs> to me? May, not have called, may or may not have called this fight last week. Kyle, you've been in this ring before. That was a fun one, man. It was, yeah. Good I was, I was looking forward to Josh, man. I've seen him a lot. Uh, you know, He's come down to the PAL to do some sparring and... Uh, He's really young, but yeah, I think he's got a lot of talent. Absolutely, this is a very competitive fight. Yeah, and I know this kid Dan is uh, well known in the MMA community, so he's not, you know, he, no he came to fight. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. With a name like Dan Cormier, you figure that, right? Oh, that's and a nickname <laughs> like the Hamburglar, yeah. you got to back that up. <laughs> yeah. Again, great effort from both guys. No matter what the, the scores are, they both should be proud. All right, here we go. We're gonna go to the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a round of applause for both of these warriors going forward? Debuts or what? After 
four hard-fought rounds we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge John Mathis scores the fight 38-38 even. Whereas Judge Martha Tremblay and Eddie Scunzio see the fight 40-36. Wow. For your winner, via majority decision, Dan the Wow! wow. That is a big surprise. I think a lot of people uh, were not expecting a 40-36 on two cards. But Dan Cormier pulls off the surprise here, repping Providence. Majority decision win, uh, draw on one card from John Madfist, which I agreed with. Yeah, I agreed with I that as well. I could see the draw. All oh, four I rounds. Know, Josh looked really good in those that, that first round. In this. I don't know how, how he didn't win that first round. On, well, on four, yeah, 40-36 wow. is a little That's, steep, but like I yeah. said, the rounds are so steep. close, it just right. depends on what you're scoring. If you're scoring aggression, yeah. Then that's that's how you get the 4036. Wow. Absolutely. Uh you know, he'll come I think Josh will come again. Again, great Definitely. effort from both guys. Yeah, hey, both guys look great. Why both not do it again, great. you know? Honestly, I think there's I think people will uh, both sides are going to say they won the fight, a little controversy. Why not? But Dan Cormier, first pro boxing match coming from MMA gets the job done. Right. Kyle, let's talk about your fight right. last week, man. You fought in front of this very raucous crowd, and yeah. you won by a third-round TKO, but uh, definitely, you definitely had to work for it. Yeah, no, uh, Paulo came to fight, for sure, you know, and I think uh, I think that's always going to be the case with me. You know, sometimes um, some of these journeyman guys get in there with a blue-chip prospect, and they, they have a feeling the night's not going to go their way, and they might have already mentally checked out, but, I mean, let's be honest, I'm a little older, um, I think when these guys look at the ring, across the ring and see me, they, even if they might not have the greatest record, they think, hey, this might be my chance for a win. Sure. So I think every time I get in there, I'm going to get the best. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the, best, you the know, best version of somebody. Of, of somebody, exactly, sure. right. So, I mean, whereas I've seen, I've seen him in some fights bow out earlier, I mean, I had to... Yeah. I had to give him a reason to get out of there, you know, and it took three rounds yeah. to do that. Absolutely. It was a very fun, competitive fight. But, uh, I mean, you've been in this big ring uh, uh, before for all yeah. these fans. A lot. Was it uh, was it different uh, being in front of a crowd of 1,000 people? Yeah, definitely. For me, I mean, the, the, this is, but last week was by far the biggest crowd I've been in front of probably since, you know, fighting back in the gloves, which has been eight, ten years. You know, sure, I mean, sure. we did the, um, the Thanksgiving Eve show last Last Thanksgiving Eve, but what do we have? 250 yeah, people exactly. here. That so was a um, limited crowd. You know, this place packed wall to wall is a little different, you know. Um, but I think, you know, by the third round, I, I felt like I started to settle in. After, you know, once you get hit in there, Scott knows how it is. You kind of start, I think, zoning the crowd out. And, Absolutely. You know, but I definitely the first few minutes, maybe even the first round, those nerves can... Uh, can play with you a little bit. It's nothing sure. like a punch in the face to give you tunnel vision. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, right. You remember why you're in there, right? But it works. Absolutely. Yeah, it does. So, uh, right now, we are going to go to a f uh, four round fight. Two guys making the pro debut. Uh, Cody Kaboski of Ventura, California, representing Knuckleheads Gym, uh, starts his pro career against Elias Jose de Oliveira of Somerville, Massachusetts. And uh, just similar uh, to your opponent, comes from that uh, Wilbur, Massachusetts. Uh, I'm surprised calls on the corner, but like you said, always a, you never know where you're going to get with these guys. They right. could be feisty, could be a quick night, you never know. Right. Uh, but I've, heard, I've heard good things about Cody, though, from Chris. He's actually mentioned, uh, talked about maybe going out there to do some training with him, and he said Cody would be the first person he'd, uh, he'd think to throw in there as a sparring partner, really tough kid. So looking forward to, to seeing this one. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Wearing red trunks with white trim tonight, making his professional boxing debut. From nearby Somerville, Massachusetts, Elias Jose de Oliveira. And his opponent, standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right. Wearing black trunks with white trim. Coming to us from Oxnard, Ventura, California tonight, also making his professional debut. Kobe. Kabowski! Four rounds, middleweights. So what I can tell you about Cody Kabowski from Oxnard, trains in Ventura. Uh, this is a guy that's been a sparring partner in the gym for fighters like Chia Santana, Hugo, Hugo Centeno. Good, good sparring. Uh, but he decided, hey, you know what? I guess I'll make my pro debut and uh, came out to New Hampshire. 
uh, uh, Chris Jay, uh, who's uh, seconding him in the corner, told me he's a very methodical fighter, loves to do body punches. He's more around 154 pounds. Tonight he's, uh, again, with the uh, catch weight of uh, around middleweight tonight. but uh, Definitely looks in shape. Definitely looks in shape. And as you know, I mean, sparring those types of guys, Kyle, when you're in there with pros like that, right. you can only get better. Absolutely, right. There seems to be a storyline with the guys from Ventura. They hit pretty hard. <laughs> Absolutely. Here we go. Round number one. And Cody Kabowski jumps on his opponent, going right to the body. And he's wasting no time. Seems his like the story's continuing. Oh, boy. Oh. Wild, wild windmill shots there from Oliveira. Cody's staying calm, though. Yeah, you don't oh, want to get right caught hand? by one of these looping shots no. here. Oh, that oh, body shot. Body shot. Uh, that's what he that's, said. I don't, I don't, I don't think he's <laughs> that getting might up. Be, yeah. <laughs> See the look on his face. Not yeah. loving life. No. No, he's not getting up. No, he is not getting up. That no. shot went right down the middle, and yeah. that is it. A quick, quick work. Those are worse than the headshots. Absolutely. In my, in, in my opinion, anyway. So while we, that was a, I think that was maybe 30 <laughs> it was seconds. It great to join you for 45 seconds. Yeah, and there it is. First round knockout for Cody Kabowski. Nice work there. Hey, before we uh, you go, Kyle, talk a little bit about Dustin Reinhold. It's going to be fighting. Yeah, so um, I've known Dustin for probably 20 years. Um, he's also fought out of the PAL at one time. Um, Dustin's a little bit older, but um, I mean, I, 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 we did a lot of sparring together this camp. I know he's in great shape, and uh, you know, they always say power is the last thing to go. And on the inside, uh, that watch that check left hook he has. He's got fast hands, so uh, I'm excited to see uh, to see Dustin do work tonight because I think uh, I think he's he's coming prepared. Awesome. Well, Kyle, we want to thank you for popping in. It was Absolutely. a great fight, no, but thank you. It was great I know we'll you see you again in the Boston Boxing for Promotion sure. show. Yeah, for sure. Rep in the Fall River. Yep. We'll see you soon, Thank man. you, guys. Absolutely. Have a good night. Yep. All right, and once again, we're going to go to a replay. Well, you told me he had good body shots. And he did, and uh, 35 seconds worth of work there from Cody Kaboski. Got it done quick. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 35 seconds of round one. Your winner, VKO, Cody Kabowski. Congratulations to Cody Kabowski. 1-0. I'm sure he'll, you know, he'll probably, if he wants to, he'll be back in the ring again. Very quick work over Elias Jose de Oliveira. So, we the, the, this, this card going quick, another first round stoppage. You can see there Joe Janik, Chris J, Cody Gaboski, Knuckleheads, 2 and 0. Oh. It was a uh, very last second uh, opponent, unfortunately. Uh, so sometimes you just, it's like a box of chocolates. You just don't know what you're going to get with these late opponents, Scott. You just never know. I mean, there's guys we saw last week with uh, David Tubbs. He fought a guy that just came in on not too much of a notice and ended up and dropping him, and it was like a freak thing. Sure. Absolutely. So, you, you know, it is, it's part of the game, unfortunately, when a guy, uh, you got guys that back out and you need to get last-second opponents. Uh, you could get a competitive fight, could get a quick night. You never know. So we are going to be uh, coming up next. It's going to be four rounds, welterweights, Dustin Reinhold from Fall River, Massachusetts. It's going to be rolling in. Taking on Ubaldo Lara from Fishers, Indiana. And we are now joined by a man who was just in the ring and now is going to be joining us for the rest of the afternoon behind the, the mic, Chris J. How's it going, my man? I'm doing great. Having a great night so far, Greg. Good to be here with you and Scott again. I'm so <laughs> excited, man. Night three of the bash. 2 0 for Knuckleheads tonight. Night yeah. three of the bash indeed. And we got Dustin Reinhold coming up uh, against Ubaldo Lara. Dustin Reinhold, what a feel good story. You know, he had uh, a lot of troubles in his own personal life. He's overcome all of those. He's doing some amazing things and he pulled off an upset essentially in his comeback fight at 45 years old kind of one of the older fighters you're going to see in the area but he was a decorated amateur and he's riding a one fight win streak ready to hopefully make it two tonight absolutely in the ring right now Ubaldo Lara 1-4 in 1 39 years old turned pro in uh, 2019 the turn pro pretty late from Fishers Indiana which is the same hometown if you watched our stream last week uh as Augustin Cicero, who fought young Holy Holyfield, uh, Evan Holyfield, in the main event there. Uh, Ubaldo Lara, 
Definitely seems to be one of those spoilery types. Uh, he, I know he has a draw with a 5-2 and two fighter. His pro debut win was over Celio Castillo, who actually fought here two weeks ago against Alejandro Polito. So a lot of connections he can draw. And, and he comes to fight. He really does have a history of really going in there and working hard. He's trying to win the fight. He's not just here for a check. And importantly, that draw with Evander Lamont, uh, who's 5-2, and two, yeah. is, is a, heck of a, nice, a heck of a nice draw. And like I said, for a 45-year-old fighter like Dustin Reinhold, who's just trying to see how far he can get it, I think this will be a competitive bout for sure. Uh, Dustin Reinhold, 6-4, two knockouts. Like you said, from Fall River, was inactive for eight years due to some personal problems. His last fight beat, uh, I think it was a surprising win over a much younger fighter, Anthony Andrazi in uh, Derry, New Hampshire. And yeah, like you said, trying to make it two in a row. Yeah, it's a total rebirth for him. He was a huge name on the amateur scene in New England, but quite a long time ago. We're going back 15, 20 years. And sure. to see somebody like that late in life decide to get back in the ring, have such success, change his entire life around. He's a wonderful guy, and it's exciting to have him here tonight at Boston Boxing Promotions, night three of the Great American Bash. Yes, sir. And by the way, we're going to be back here September 24th. Fall brawl. Fall brawl. Right here great. in the Castleton. It's so. going to be great. And we're going to see a lot of the highlights from the three cards that we've seen at the Great American Bash. Some of the fighters with the biggest draws, the most exciting names, will all be back for one yes, night sir. at the Fall Brawl. There he is, Dustin Reinhold in, in the ring. Getting ready to go here. He's in tremendous shape. Yeah, for, 45 for, years old. Stunning, stunning. Yeah. I saw him warming up in the back, and I was like, my oh, God, the physique on a 45-year-old man, it's, it's, it's insane. C clearly a fan of the total gym system. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin couldn't wait to tell me that he's going to be 46. Ladies and gentlemen, for our right. next contest, we go to the welterweight division. This fight is scheduled for four rounds. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. He's sporting white trunks with the colors of the Mexican flag on the side. He comes to us all the way from Fishers, Indiana. Ladies and gentlemen, El Capitan Obado. Ah. And his opponent standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right. Wearing black trunks with white trim. Coming to us from Massachusetts. All right, guys, as you said, uh, Peter said, four rounds, Walter Waits, Dustin Reinhold, Ubaldo Lara. You know, it's so nice to see the support that Dustin has, too. He clearly has a big fan base that came out here from Fall River. I think everybody's caught up in his story and what he's done in yes. his own personal life and the fact that he's transitioning it into the ring and having success. It's a comeback in life in and out of the ring, which Absolutely. you just got to love. Yeah, he's definitely overcome a lot. He's turned his life around, and uh, we're, uh, we're definitely uh, happy that he's, uh, he's in here tonight. All right, here we go. Round one of four. I know Dustin has a really good left hook, so let's look out for that here. Yeah. You can tell he's definitely got the height advantage. But Lara, just from the quick sample size here, uh, doesn't seem afraid to trade. He's yeah, bowling and rushing in. He's looking to rough it up a little bit for sure, because because Reinhold is a bit of a boxer over a puncher, but he's winging him tonight. Mm -hmm. There's that hook you mentioned, Scott. By the way, David Chubbs checking in, as uh, Scott mentioned earlier, when sometimes with these opponents, you never know what you're going to get. And he mentioned uh, his opponent that he didn't know uh, dropped him, but David Chubbs was able to get up and go for the kill. So sometimes you just don't know with a guy like Lara yeah. what you're getting. But Reinhold getting through the guard early. Beautiful combination. He snuck a really nice uppercut in there. I think that definitely buzzed Lara. Lara's nice. nice. here to fight, though. He's winning some big I'd, shots. I'd like to see Dustin go to the body with that, that left hook. Touch him to the head and bring it to the bottom. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Lara looks a little soft in the body, and Dustin's kind of been staying upstairs. Lara definitely uh, trying to keep this fight on the inside, whereas I think you could see Dustin's having his best work, and he can work behind the jab, create a little bit of distance. Dustin gets a lot of sparring experience too in that Fall River area. There's a lot of great fighters. Chris Jacobs, who we'll see later tonight. Kyle Kusick, who we saw last week. Just on commentary. Yeah. Fall, oh, what great. Uh, Fall River's got a, quite a scene uh, quite a scene happening. And we Absolutely. hope that Boston Boxing Promotions will be doing a show in Fall River next year. Oh, nothing beats the atmosphere of the PAL gym. Yeah. Oh, Ryan holds on fire here. Good round hit so far for uh, for Dustin Reinhold. Yeah, absolutely. There he tried to sneak that little hook into the body that you had mentioned, Scott, but a, a little more of that I think would really kind of potentially bring this to a close. There it is, nice sweeping shot. 
Lara last fought in Florida. Uh, the body shot. Du double body shot. You in can June. tell Lara felt it. Oh, oh loudest right. body shot we've heard so far tonight. Beautiful that, left hook. And that's what I'm looking for here from Dustin. Yeah, you can tell uh, Lara definitely took a pause there. Yeah, Lara looks like he's got a little blood coming from, I think, his right eyelid, or maybe it's his right forehead. I think it's above, yeah, it's up yes, on the forehead the area. I think it might have been a slight clash of heads on accident, yeah. maybe an elbow. Yeah, he's already flicking his head, yep. though, so that means a little blood's probably drizzling down there. Doesn't look like it's in too crucial of an area, though. No. Now they're out. Oh, they grazed their heads again there. Nice one, too. Nice one, too, yes, from, from Reinhold. Been a competitive round one. Yeah. Nice, oh. jab, nice stiff jab from Dustin. I think Laura might have been a little bit off balance there. But in the last 10 seconds of a fight, that's what the judges see. I think we're looking at an easy round for Reinhold. Absolutely. 10 second warning. And I agree with you. I think that is a clear Dustin Reinhold. Yeah. Oh, round one, he definitely staggered him there right yeah. before the bell, Chris. Absolutely. Great, great round for Reinhold. Definitely a Reinhold round. Absolutely. Scott, what would you like to see Reinhold do in round number two and see if he can pick it up a bit? I'd like to see him work his jab a little more, throw some feints in there, and I'd like to see him touch to the head and then shoot a big left hook to the body, kind of like Mickey Ward used to do. Because if he sets it up better, I could see when he lands that body shot, Lara's really feeling it. So I'd like to see him take it from the head and bring it down to the body a little more. And it's going to do one of two things. It's either going to make him take a knee or it's going to open up the head. And for Lara, I'd like to see him just do what he was. He was, he was just trying to make it as uncomfortable as he can. Yeah, absolutely. And he did, it, he did a fairly good job for a good part of the round. I and mean, Chris is a guy that's been uh, up there cornering guys tonight. That's a pretty big ring. The ring is absolutely massive. For the viewers at home, if you can't tell, this is about as large as a professional ring gets. And there's a lot of exhaustion even to get to the other corner. It's a lot of space, and a lot of guys are not training in gyms of this size. So I do think you see gas tanks hit a little harder in a big ring like this. Here we go, round number two of four. Dustin Reinhold from Fall River, Massachusetts in the black and white trunks. His opponent is Ubaldo Lara representing the colors of Mexico on his trunks. I'm saying this about Ubaldo Lara, man. Guy, guy is scrappy. Yeah. That's the best way you can put it. He's flinging a lot of arm shots yeah, right he, now. He's swinging some arm shots, but he's, he was getting the best of Reinhold. He there. was, and then Dustin uh, did counter with a nice upstairs one-two. I think Dustin wants to get around some of uh, when Lara leaves his hands down. Oh, nice double body shot. Up with the hook. There's a little bit of that touch of that ward there, going to the body, <laughs> doubling up the hook. I think you're right, Chris. I think the, the, the conditioning in this fight is really going to be the difference, big, yeah. big difference. And Dustin, the fan, standing in the corner, not sitting down. Much like many over 40 fighters, George Foreman, um, of course. <laughs> well, I mean, it takes extra energy to do that squat to get back up. Absolutely. When you get into the mid-40s, you take whatever advantage you can get when it comes to uh, endurance. Well, I think you know a little something about fighting in your 40s, Chris J. I, I, that's true. That's true. I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there sooner than later, yeah. Chris. Don't worry. See you next month, uh, <laughs> Gray. See you next year, Scott. <laughs> hey, now. I still I got five years, but uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice, nice, nice one, too. Jab. Yeah, Dustin's taking a little more control this round. He's, yeah. he's being more calm, working better. I see a lot of precise jabs. Yeah, jabs really being effective. Oh. And there he is. Like Lara likes to leave his hands down when he's rushing in, and he's going to be a, a target. Yeah. Reinhold's really taking advantage of that when those hands drop. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Lara could take a punch because yeah. Dustin's cracking him yeah. hard right now. Oof. Dustin is a little slappy with his shots, though, guys. Those, those hooks aren't necessarily landing clean. There's a little bit of a slap to him. Yep. Both guys having nice moments in this round. Again, very competitive four-rounder. Lara is not here to lie down whatsoever. And he is making Dustin Reinhold work for every second. And Dustin, though, nice. I tell you, man, he's bouncing a lot of left hooks off that head, and, and it's not getting Lara out of there. But I think uh, this, he is slapping those tough. hooks. Yeah. If he would sit on those just a little more and let that the actual punch part of the glove land, I think he I think he would be able to finish Lara off because he's having a lot of success landing it. But I'll tell you, Bala Lara, scrappy as they come, man. Yeah. Fun guy to watch. Fun oh, guy absolutely. to have on a card. 
definitely a guy that's going to test people. And uh, perfect test when you're 45, seeing what you got left yeah. against uh, an opponent like this. 10 second warning. Looks like Gubaldo got himself tied <laughs> up there. Does look like Lara's gassing a little oh, bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That is the end of the third round. Yeah. So, uh, I, Scott, who, did you, who do you think ended up winning that round there? Oh, that was, in my opinion, clearly a Reinhold round. He just, he was too accurate the whole round. He was just, and I agree with you that he could have turned turn them punches over a little more, a little bit of a slap, but still, scoring-wise, absolutely, he was landing really clean punches consistently throughout the entire round. Definitely hey, clean round. For I have it up two rounds to nothing, Reinhold. Absolutely. Hey, want to give a shout-out. Thank you, David Tubbs, saying we're doing an excellent job announcing your boy. It's Chris wow. J, David Tubbs. Gotta love David. He was on night one of the Great American Bash and had that, that, that fun little scrap, the double first knockdown. And uh, Marianne G from uh, come checking in from Birmingham in the UK. Wow. Oh, thank right. you, God. Thank you, man. Birmingham. We appreciate the kind words. Birmingham Academy, a great place to play and freeze outside. <laughs> so we appreciate every, uh, if you're coming as far as the UK to watch us in New Hampshire, Just we, awesome. we appreciate it. All right, round three of four welterweights. Again, this is Dustin Reinhold, uh, six and four, 45 years old, going up against Ubaldo Lara, who is one, four, and one. Dustin Reinhold has a massive bruise, almost like a little hematoma starting to happen, if you guys see on the right forehead. He had touched oh. it earlier. I think it was a headbutt. But yes, sir. Get, get a look at the right side of his face. Oh, and again, Dustin Reinhold is just tagging Lara with lefts and rights. And But Lara, man, coming right back, trying to throw. Uh, high output from both guys here in the first 30 oh. seconds. Lara gets stunned by a 1-2, Chris. Yeah. Off the ropes. Dustin threw that off the ropes. Lara's really impressing me here, I gotta say. Oh yeah, he did not come to fish from Fishers, Indiana to lie down, but yeah. I'll tell you right now, he's definitely starting to feel these punches. Yeah. Oh. Dustin Reinhold just missed with a nice two. And what you like to see is the more the punches affect him, the more aggressive he gets. Yeah. You can tell even at 45 years old, Dustin Reinhold has a lot of boxing yeah. knowledge drilled into him. It's that innate ability. Yes. You know, there's a lot of things that are instinct. You may not be as fast as you were, but you still react the same way. Uh, Vancouver, British Columbia, checking in from the chat as well. Thank you guys. If you're anyone who's outside the U.S., especially, thank tremendous. you for coming. This and, is tremendous. And come visit us here at the Castleton. Oh, yeah. New England's version of the Blue Horizon. <laughs> we're trying no, to build see, it, man. Seeing a fight here, I think, is a bucket list thing if you're oh, a club boxing fan. This is, no an doubt about it. this is an atmosphere. Atmosphere, man. Yeah. It's lively here Absolutely. tonight. Even week three, three weeks in a row, we still got a great crowd. Yeah. Uh, Leicester, UK as well. Thank you, guys. This is, again, four-round fight. Um, man, we are seeing a lot of work being put in here. Uh, a lot of energy uh, from both of these guys. Oof. Oh, nice work. By nice one-two there. Laura just eating these punches and finally goes down from the accumulation. Wow. Oh, and went back down. Lara got move. up a little too fast there. I think but, he realized he needed to take more of a more of a count. But Scott and Chris, I know you guys have probably both been hurt in the gym before. When you're in a situation like this, it's got to be difficult. Got to yeah. get the head clear. I you got to stay calm is what you got to do. I think Reinhold wants a stoppage, though. His comeback fight that he had recently that he won was a decision victory. I think he'd love to have a stoppage on his record. And uh, again, he's already banked a 10-8 round here in round number three. Lara bleeding from that left oh, eye, and he is just taking a lot of shots right now. Nice 3-2, right down the middle. A lot of, he's throwing a lot of overhands, man. They are landing. I don't know how much uh, Lars got left in that tank of his, but commending his effort. You know, the jab is just so effective, Scott, as it always is. You know, the guy that out jabs tends to be the, the winner of a fight like this, you know. Every time he throws a jab, it lands. Yeah, I mean, Lara's hands are down very low right now, guys, at this point. I think it's I think it's a lot of exhaustion. Oh, I think the heads came together again. Yeah. It's a se second big accidental headbutt. Jackie Morrell telling them to keep it going. Oh! oh! Ends the fight with a monster hook <laughs> right at the bell. Well, if there was any question who won that round, <laughs> he made sure you yes. knew it was him. Yeah. You, you, you want to put an eight in that box, yeah. not a nine. That's uh, a punch that I think every fighter on earth wants to land with one second left. That big shot, and there's no time to react to it. You know? un unquestionably. So I think I think it's three rounds to nothing right now for Dustin Reinhold with the 10-8 as well. So he's up comfortably ahead here with the fourth and final round coming. 
But yeah, I think Lara he's got doesn't have a, a lot of energy left. Uh, by the way, I think it's Augustin Serra who fought last week cornering yeah, Lara. Said, yeah, yeah, he so. fought uh, uh, Young Holyfield last week on night yes, two sir. of the Great American Boxing Bash. Put up a pretty good fight. Uh, a bizarre thing that happened on that fight, Scott. I know you're calling it, but a 10-5 round. You don't see that a whole lot in boxing. That that was very unique with the that four knockdowns. That might have been one of the only times we've ever seen that. Yeah. That's that. That was, I mean, 10-6. Yeah, Greg, you're the historian. Have you ever seen a 10-5 <laughs> round before last weekend's main uh, event? Uh, you know, my a good friend of mine, Lee Groves, uh, who's a box, true oh. Boston histor uh, boxing yeah. historian. Yeah, you know, Scott knows him. I'm sure oh. you are familiar with him. He pointed out there was a title fight with four knockdowns, and the guy who got knocked down four times ended up coming back to win. Really? Yes. Oh, that's it. Lee Groves. That's Talk classic. Talk about an encyclopedia of knowledge. Fountain of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, I see a shout-out, by the way, to uh, oh, Tim Boxeo sent me. From Justin Brooklyn. Reynolds really uh, Justin jumps in, and that's it. That's Good it. Stop it. And I think it, I think I think the hook was going to be quick. Dustin Reinhold get, taking care of business. Nice work there, Dustin Reinhold. First stoppage on the comeback. There nice work. Is. Dustin Reinhold just coming down to say hi to the announcing team. You got to love that. <laughs> Dustin Reinhold's now yeah. seven and four. Yeah, like that, I said, that was a really good performance. I mean, yeah. it's, I'm very curious to see where he goes next. Does Absolutely. he think he needs another fight more in the tune-up world, or does he want right. to take that well, record? That well, he has this, this could be a problem for Dustin because he might not want to continue at this age, but he kind of has to after now looking that good. Take a look at the replay here. The stoppage, by the way, came at 20 seconds of the fourth round, so he came in pretty quick. And I think Jackie had the, the quick hook in mind. And yeah, this is just beautiful punching upstairs. I, I think that was a good stoppage by Jackie. Yeah. I really, I. Like I that. agree. No need. It was a good fight. Reinhold was clearly overpowering him. Yes. It was time. Lara wouldn't have gave up. We yes. know that. We, we know that. But sometimes the referee's there to save you from yourself. Absolutely. And yeah. that's, this is one of them cases. Because Lara is just a tough guy. And, you know, he didn't need to take clean punches for another two minutes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, much better stoppage from Jackie in this one than uh, the Young Holyfield fight last week. Uh, someone asking, uh, isn't three knockdowns the limit? Not in New Hampshire. No three knockdown rule. No. So he a As last week, we saw 37 yep. knockdowns in the, uh, <laughs> the, the Young Holyfield fight. It was a lot of knockdowns. Yeah. Uh, I saw somebody repping uh, Tim Boxeo in the chat. Thank you very much. F hello from Brooklyn. We always appreciate everybody that uh, Tim Boxeo uh, sends to us. Tim Boxeo needs to attend one of these events. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, but yeah man. Gutsy effort from Ubaldo Lara, man. He earned every uh, cent of his payday. His yeah. trunk's got a little bit of blood on him, yeah. man. He went through a fight for sure. And he tried to win. That's Oh, yeah. He wants to win. Yeah, that was a great fight. You know, you, you, go, you go to a show and see a fight like that, oh. nothing to complain about. That's what it's all about. So, once again, Dustin Reinhold, TKO4 winner, 7-4 and four as a pro, 20 seconds in round number four. Good work from him tonight. He has to be proud of a two-fight win streak, really turning things around at 45 yeah. years old. Tremendous shape. Yeah, and as we mentioned earlier, in his own personal life, some of the demons that he's had, he's beat them. He's and beat he, him. he's living a great life. He's doing a lot of good things for people. And he's a, a popular trainer in the Fall River area. Fighters, that was a hell of a fight here in Wintam, New Hampshire tonight. The end comes in 20 seconds of round number four. Referee Jackie Morrell calls a halt to the action. Via TKO, Dustin Reinhold. Dustin Reinhold, winner tonight. Uh, I see in the chat Tim Boxeo himself yelling, yo, let's get it. Tim, <laughs> glad you're here, man. Patrick Connor, another good uh, guy that I'm glad I met through Twitter, a boxing historian. Patrick Connor's incredible on yeah. Twitter. Very funny man, too. Awesome. Great, uh, great follow on Twitter. Yeah, boxing history, go get it, man. Go follow it. He's a uh, found of knowledge as well. So always cool seeing all these uh, people I really respect and know yeah. a lot more about boxing than I do coming to check this out. Uh, really appreciate it. And good people, too. I see uh, Lefty Nero found you guys from Thompson Boxing. Salute from Florida. Thank you. Greetings from Scotland. <laughs> oh, my God. I really, like I said, UK, all around the world, we really appreciate you guys coming yeah. to our humble abode here in New yeah. Hampshire. And it's awesome. And, and we obviously we have people from all over the world. But yes. this is a place for boxing fans. This is for yes. people that really love the sport of boxing. And it's great to have people like that in the chat. It's great to have these type of viewers. So and, uh, The we, Castleton's a real special place. And I think this is a fight you're going to be personally excited for, Chris. Yes. So I'm going to let you take right. the, take, run with this one. Four rounds, uh, Jordan Yet and Tom Kenny. Tell me about these. You know, they're, uh, 
what can you say about the Irish beast Tom Kenny that has not already been said? If you're not familiar with him, he's nothing short of a force of nature. He is a scrapper, he is a tough guy, but he has had very limited success in his professional career. Um, in many cases, he's had performances that have become uh, memes, if you will, for um, some uh, occurrences that have happened in the ring. Bottom line, he's, he's an interesting fighter. He's, he's very awkward, stylistically, but I, he's a fun guy, he's a friendly guy, he always gives it his best, and he, he's a fun watch, you he know? Is, he's a guy that you have personally fought as a professional in yes. your one fight. That's true, this was my, uh, this was my opponent who I fought in my uh, debut. Um, we've become, I don't want to say friends, but we've become acquaintances, and sure. I, I got a lot of respect for him. I gave him a pep talk and gave him some advice in the back, actually, because I really want to see him get through a round tonight, because he's in against who's coming to the ring. Jordan Yen. Jordan Yen's Jordan pro him. debut. And uh, Jordan Yen is a scrappy little guy. He's had three uh, MMA fights mixed, uh, as an amateur. Decided to go to boxing, and he's out of the South Paul gym, which viewers will know was the home of Boston Boxing Promotions pandemic shows. Absolutely. If you watch any of our shows previously to this during uh, Bo Great American Boxing Bash series, you saw them in the uh, Southpaw Boxing and Fitness Gym, and this is their first pro. Yeah, this is the first pro out of the gym. Uh, Mike McBride, a wonderful trainer and the owner of Southpaw, him and his wife Kim, just great, the best. great people, great supporters of New England boxing scene. However, um, this is the first professional to actually come from their gym, and I think they were inspired in many ways by the shows. They were hosting professional shows and didn't have their own professional fighter, but Jordan Yen has come along, and I am really surprised. Jordan Yen is wearing Contenders. He's wearing contenders underwear, but he's not wearing boxing trunks. He's wearing almost a mixed uh, martial Clark's artist look, yes. trunks, which you don't see too often. No, you do not. Uh, I know both gentlemen, both good guys. When you when you know fighter Scott, it's always tough. You, 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 you're rooting for both of them in a way, you know. Um, but uh, this will be a very interesting fight. For Tom Kenny, the true goal is... South Bob Boxing and Fitness. Tonight, he makes his professional boxing debut. Ladies and gentlemen, Jordan Yenton. So you said Jordan Yenton in those Kumite uh, uh, trunks from Contenders Clothing. Get those online. Yeah, Contenders Clothing, a, a sponsor of Boston Boxing yes, Promotions. Sir. And we're always a big fan of their support and for the sport. But with we, the Cobra Kai line. We, most fighters wear those under their trunks. Yes. Jordan Yenton <laughs> is putting them on the outside. It's going to be a really interesting fight. I talked to Jordan Yenton. He said he wants to get a little time in the ring. He doesn't want his pro debut to be a 30-second okay. smash out. Let's so, see if Tom Kenny gets to round number two. That's what we all want to see. That is, that is the goal. It's War Kenny, and it's happening right now here on YouTube. Boston Boxing Promotions, the Irish Beast versus Young Jordan Yen. Absolutely, here we go. And Jordan's not rushing across the ring, no, he's which not. is nice to see. He does. He is taking his time, which he said. Tom Kenny throwing a nice little hook there, a little sneaky. But yeah, Jordan Yen, like you said, not a ton of uh, amateur boxing experience. He's uh, both guys, you know, learning on the job. Yeah. Uh, Tom, uh, my advice to him, and I think the best thing for him is to move, move, move. He's Absolutely. not one to stand it's a, and trade. It's a he's, wide gym. He's got to stay on the move. Yes. He needs to keep those gloves up as well. Does not want to get tagged. I'll say this. Tom Kenny Throwing trying his shot. best. Oh. You got to see if Jordan Yenton can uh, counter over them. But I will say this. This is the most relaxed pace I've seen Tom Kenny. Yeah, and, and Kenny's so lanky. And in some ways, he's kind of hard to hit. You know, he's such an unorthodox style. He's yep. moving really well tonight, though. I will say this. He's definitely uh, motivated in there. But, yeah, his punches come from wide angles. Yeah. He's got to keep those hands up. Yeah, and with a nice jab. He, I like how Jordan's taking his time, though. I like how he's getting some ring experience. There's some beautiful defense. That was nice yeah. bobbing and weaving. Yeah, there. absolutely. And, again, coming from South Paul Fitness. Oh, oh down goes Kenny. I think that's more of like a hook shot. Let's see if Kenny's going to beat the count here. Looked like an overhand right. Yep. See if Tom can make it. And he's not oh. going to make it. He's not going to make it. I, th uh. I think Tom Kenny did want to continue. Yeah. The referee with a quick hook. As Toto plays over the speakers. As Toto. I you know, thought he beat the I thought he beat the count. He beat the count. Looked like he wanted to fight. I think Leo Garstel just 
Yeah. I think Leo it wasn't, knowing, it wasn't emph emphatic enough. Yeah, and I think him knowing Kenny's history, I think there's a certain amount of protection, you know. Um, but, you know, credit to Tom Kenny. It's, 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 hey, it's, he, he tried. He put up a fight tonight, and congratulations to Jordan Yang. Your yep. pro debut is always a special thing. 121 you know? of the first round. It was uh, entertaining as long as it lasted. Yeah. Nice overhand right to finish things. It was a great shot. And he took his time and he kept a nice pace, which is nice. Some people get yeah. a little overzealous when they fight Tom. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You want? You think he can just bull rush in, and, and uh, but it was a very patient performance from Jordan Yenton. Yeah, and uh, repping Methuen, man. Repping Southpaw Boxing and Fitness, now 1-0 uh, uh, and as a professional. Yeah, in Southpaw Boxing and Fitness, we in Windham, where we are, uh, we simply them up. Can't. Oh, let's go to, re oh, sorry, let's go to uh, uh, we, we replay earlier. But yeah, Tom Kenny getting knocked down. He seemed focused. It seemed like he was looking at the ref. But, yep. but I'm really happy for Southpaw yeah, Boxing absolutely. Fitness. I mean, they are friends of this promotion at the highest level. They're great people. I think uh, the Mike Bryan is a wonderful trainer, and I hopefully think this will start a stable for him of I hope professionals so. coming out of Southpaw. They, because it's great to have a gym in the hometown of the Castleton, you know, yeah. where fights are. We really owe, uh, Boston Boss Promotions really owes them a lot for their generosity during the pandemic, and those shows would not have happened without them. I'd be willing to say the entire New England fight scene oh, owes, owes Southpaw Boxing so much. Fitness. It was the I first agree. place to have a club show on the entire East Coast. Yeah. Four shows in total during the pandemic. It kept so many fighters busy. Oh it my gave God. so many fighters, especially from the gym, I'm out of the opportunity to even work. I, yeah, I, I don't. I would tell them. I don't think you realize. Like you're, you're keeping the scene alive yeah. right now. You take a fighter like Danny Robles. Danny Robles is from Oxnard, California, but he was yeah. built in New Hampshire. Minute, Round number one. Referee Leo Gerstel calls a halt to this action. Your winner by KO. Yeah. So congratulations, Jordan Yen. First win of his career. Yeah against a very scrappy Tom Kenny. So we are gonna go to uh, our sixth fight of the evening, but before then, let us go to a sponsor of our next fighter, Nick Molina. behalf of myself, my crew, and my company, we wish you all the luck. You're one hell of a freaking fighter. Go get him, brother. And we also want to thank sponsors uh, for Nick Molina, uh, additional sponsors, Simply Keeley, Etsy Shop, Coco Early Associates, and Drake It Mass, Mass White Stamp Painting, and uh, Drake It Car Wash. We want to thank all the sponsors for Nick Molina, and really anybody who's you know helped sponsor fighters on these shows, the lifeblood yeah. that can make this happen. Absolutely. I mean, uh, a business to be involved in boxing at this level, it's just such an amazing thing. It harkens back to the old days, right, where cards would be put on basically off the weight of local businesses, and, and that's what's so great about the Castleton. It's a real mix mash of people. Kathy Duba last week commented that this type of crowd is great because you have families, you have business owners, you have uh, the elderly, you have the young. It's 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 a community yes. event here at the Castleton. It really, it, I think that's the right way to put it. It really does feel like a community a here. Community. People are very supportive. Take a look at the crowd right now. Yeah. Just you know another packed house, but it's diverse. It's friendly. Yes. Everybody's supportive here. It's it's great. It's it's definitely a cool atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, J. L. Borges Mendez in the ring now for a four-round lightweight bout, and uh, we are now going to be waiting the entrance of Nick Molina, very popular fighter from Lowell, Massachusetts. Uh, I mean, just was in this ring two weeks ago, and back at it again to stay active, looking for that fifth pro win. Yeah, um, he joins Danny Robles and Alejandro Polino as fighters that were on more than one night of the Great American Boxing Bash. Just to get that work, it's an opportunity to be performed that quickly. Nick Molina, though, had a very interesting fight. Uh, Scott, you and I called that one. 
we were a little disappointed that he didn't finish Mike Taylor. A week later, Alejandro Polinic finished Mike Taylor in the first round. So I think Molina is desperate to get that KO. A lot of people wanted it in his last outing, and he struggled with how unorthodox Taylor was. Yeah, Nick, Nick has won me over because his first two pro fights, unfortunately, he beat two of my friends. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. And then, um, he, he wasn't tough. His first two fights. Yeah, Bernard, Davis. Yeah, Bernard Davis, very good fighter. Justin Morales. Justin Morales. Very Justin talented. Morales. Yeah. He's arguably the best 0-1 fighter on earth right now. Yeah, so. Justin, man, Justin, I looked up to Justin when I was a kid, so it was tough to watch Nick beat him, but, I mean, watching Nick these last few fights, I mean, the kids, he's he's a worker. Yeah. I, I like it. I like his style. He has good technique, good stamina, comes to fight. He's prepared. And, I mean, he's doing what he has to do right now at this stage of his career. I think the early knock on Nick, though, is the power. Yes. You know, uh, when he was in there only with one, Taylor. Only one knockout in four fights. Yeah, yeah, one knockout in four fights. Tough fights, but that's something that can progress. He's a sure. very young fighter. But in an opponent like he has tonight, I think he should expect the knockout, and I think it'll be helpful for him to jump off that yes. long, tough, awkward fight. To be honest, the expectation here is a knockout, I, I think, over uh, Mendez, who I'm not sure what his combat is experience is. I think we'll find out when the bell yeah. Ranks. You couldn't find a lot of information on you know, him. He's a bit, it, bit of a mystery. A bit of a mystery man. So he definitely at least looks like he's, uh, you know, in shape. Uh, so we'll see what, what happens when he uh, when the bell rings for yeah. sure. Uh, but Nick Molina, definitely a, a popular fighter, proven ticket seller as well. And, again, it's all about right now just getting fights under the belt, building the record, it's taking what you learn in the gym, using it in the ring, and eventually those those opportunities are going to come, man. The bigger fights are going to come. And, of course, winning. Nick Hales from Lowell, which is the home of Mickey Ward, who is uh, one of Boston Boxing Promotion's biggest supporters and you've called fights with before. Absolutely. All right, so the music uh, is starting to play here. I think that is Nick Molina's entrance music, so just waiting for him to come into the ring. Again, this is our sixth of ten fights tonight, so thanks for hanging in with us here at Boston Boxing Promotions at the Castleton. And we know some of you have been with us for three straight oh weeks. Oh, my God. Thank you so you, much for yes. supporting these shows, for being part of it. It means a lot to all of us. It's been a real pleasure to have yes. such a, a, a joyous a joyous unity of boxing <laughs> community here. Yes, if you've been here watching these, it doesn't matter if you watched them live, you watched them later, if you've joined us each of these three weeks, we really appreciate it. And I hear some uh, some Eminem playing yeah. over the speakers, and here comes Nick Molina from Lowell. Guess who's back after two weeks? Guess who's back. That's, that's a good, nice song to come out to. 22 years old from Lowell, Mass, trained by Manny Farley. A 2020 New England Golden Gloves finalist. As you said, his last fight just two weeks ago, a four-round win over Michael Taylor. Nick is a very soft-spoken gentleman. You had a chance to talk to him, Greg. Very quiet, very reserved for a younger guy. Not very flashy, which I, I appreciate. Oh, he seems to have a poker face on when he fights. Yes. Also has a poker face in ordinary day-to-day -day conversation. to cuts, though, and bruises. We talked about that, Scott. Yes. He's, 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 so far, that skin, his, 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 his skin complexion, it, it just cuts and bruises easy. I think he's at uh, a bruising cut. For our next contest, we go to the welterweight division. This fight is scheduled for four rounds. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Wearing red trunks with black trim. Coming to us from Boston, Massachusetts, Jow Borges Mendez. And his opponent bending directly across the ring, wearing black trunks with silver trim. Coming to us from nearby Lowell, Massachusetts, they call him St. Nick, Nick Molina. Four rounds, wild points. You know, for a guy that fought two weeks ago, he still brings them in, man. Yeah, that's really impressive. <laughs> uh, a lot of fans came to see uh, uh, Nick, Nick Molina here against Jao Borges Mendez of Boston. We'll see how long this one goes. Uh, I think we'll find out when the bell rings. We'll get an idea, I think, of uh, how this one's going to look. It's Mendez being the mystery man. Yeah. Taking this fight on very short notice. Several guys actually stepped up and took yes. fights on short notice on this card. And Truly you, saved the show. You, you really have to respect that. Yes. It takes a lot of guts to get in this ring, no matter who you are. 100%. All right, so here we go, round one. I think Nick is looking to display some power tonight. And uh, out of the gate, I think the, this could be a very quick fight. Yeah, I, I see I see a lot of uh, 
Mendez already trying to turn around here. And Molina smoking him in the corner. Body so shots, head shots. And that's got to be it. And that might have been. That was a quick, that was a quick fight. That was fast. Let's see if that breaks the, the New Hampshire record, State which, knockout which record. Danny Robles has. That is Danny got to the be Clog close. has the record. Let's see. We're gonna get we're gonna get a number I, on there. I, that's got to be quick. That's got to be quick. I think he made it just because there were so many punches it's, that had to it's go. It's got to be under 30. 21 seconds. Danny Robles still with the New Hampshire Stolak. State knockout record. You know, I just don't understand why the ref didn't stop this fight. He was defenseless with his back turned to the side. Yes, I, you can see there. He, I mean, he took a lot of shots. You need to stop that fight. I, I, I don't know what the heck he was looking I for. I think he was trying to give him a chance, but I mean. But when you turn that shoulder yeah, and he, you're no that, longer defending yourself. That's a form of uh, submitting. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think, that, I think that's Nick, the boxing equivalent of tapping out. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think Nick knew right away that he was the better fighter, yeah. and he just jumped on him. And that's what you got to do with guys like that 100%. so you know unfortunately like I said uh Chris said earlier you know, uh, opponents are sometimes like a box of chocolates you just don't know what you're gonna you don't know what you're gonna get sometimes <laughs> totally sometimes uh they come to fight and put on a great show and pull off an upset and sometimes they show up in Nike they realize very shoes. quickly uh yeah, they show up in Nike shoes and they find out very quickly yeah. that uh the hurt game is not for them and that's yeah, okay 100 a lot of guys are just shocked to get hit by an eight ounce glove it's something that not a yeah. lot of people have experienced Pain, painful. even if they've sparred they've been right. in 16 ounce gloves you know they get in there and it's just a different piece. You, it's it's uh it's 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 you know eight ounce gloves a lot of eyes on you uh it's nervous energy it's it's uh quick and brutal i also think there was a lot of shots there that he didn't have to take though no he yeah he he, he took he took a lot of extra ones there yeah. but again like in a fight like that you just know right away he, he's just out there. still a relatively tough guy because he didn't drop him no, that's he true. didn't drop. He did yeah. stay on his feet. Yeah. Um, for that, you got a lot of a lot of guts. Uh, Justin Morales checking in the chat says, "Hey guys, Team Morales is back. Uh, nothing but love." So shouting oh, you out, oh. Scott. There we go. That's my guy. Wow. Justin Morales getting a lot of love tonight on the chat. Oh yeah, I had, a, had an excellent effort against uh, Nick Molina, and great, I even said fight. after that fight, I'd love to see it again. I'd see those that rematch two. in a oh, second. Absolutely. Yeah. Even right now, even what we've seen from Molina, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see Morales yep. Molina again. I agree. I think that would, uh, I think it would be a very competitive fight. We're going to see Nick Molina again, uh, September 24th. Oh, he's, he's definite, definite he is, for the card. He, yes, uh, he will. Got any other names, Gray, that are official yes. for the 24th? Uh, right now, again, card subject to change, but we'll see uh, Kevin Walsh, Sean Bay, Alejandro Polino uh, okay. are on are on our preliminary are on the preliminary list. So a couple of fan favorites there. We'll be back at it at it again. Uh, oh, we already have an ad. And we already got a graphic for you. Here it is. Fall brawl, September 24th. Michael Bolger. Michael Bolger and those Hollywood uh, tan looks there yes. on the bottom left. And. Uh, uh, Nate, Nate Blacken, who had a lot of fans uh, last time he was in the ring. So, Excellent. Uh, all, so, we're all coming. And more names to be announced, including a couple surprises that uh, Boston Boxing Promotions President Peter Zimmore, I think, is going to blow some minds when you hear one or two of the names Ooh. on this card. But he said he has to sit on him. He's oh, not ready to, to sit on him. Well, tickets available at BoxingNH.com. $40 standing room, $60 ringside at the Castleton Banquet Conference yes. Center. And if you are anywhere in the New England area and you haven't experienced a show here, I'm telling you, I'm begging yeah. you, come. This is such electricity in this venue. It's such an amazing scene. Yes. Worth checking out. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at 21 seconds of round number one. Referee Jackie Morrell calls up to this contest. Your winner, via TKO, St. Nick. So congratulations to Nick Molina. Goes to 5-0 and with two knockouts now. And again, I think as expected, we yeah. figured that was going to be a uh, stoppage for him, uh, taking care of business. And we are going to roll right along here to fight number 7 of 10. Uh, two, two, two fighters that we are very familiar with. It's going to be Ray Oliveira Jr. coming from New Bedford, Massachusetts, taking on uh, a favorite of ours, Chris, Jader Alves to Oliveira. Jader. Jader is one of my favorite opponents in New England, if not all of New England. Uh, he comes to fight. He has a very interesting style. He's a bit of a showman, but he does rounds. He's not a guy that you can get out of there easily. So Scott, Ray Oliveira Jr. being a New Bedford guy, I imagine you are a little familiar with him. Yeah, I've met him once or twice. <laughs> so Ricky, uh, I'm sure you've seen him fight. What can we expect from Ray Oliveira Jr.? Has He's been out of the ring since 2019. I'm sure he's eager to get back in and get on the winning track. Well, let me just correct myself. Ray Jr. is like family to me. Oh, it's going to be oh. hard not to be biased on this one. <laughs> no, Ray, he's just... He's a powerhouse. He's 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 a strong, durable, come forward kind of fighter. He's he's not gonna move around and jab unless he switched something up, and I don't know about it. 
And he, uh, at eight and three, he has even matched up pretty tough in his career. I mean, you look at his record, uh, fought a lot on those CES shows down in Rhode Island, uh, and no easy touches on shows like that. They really threw him in uh, tough in his career, but uh, he's coming off two losses in a row. He hasn't been in the ring in a while, and I'm sure he wants to get a win tonight against Deke. Uh, I call Jader a Hector Camacho-like. Uh, you'll be seeing a performance from him. Very awkward fighter. Jader's record is so not in, uh, indicative of who he is. You know, he's yet to have a professional victory, but when you watch this guy, you're almost surprised that he doesn't have a win. He's been in tough. You talk about Ray Alvarez Jr. being in tough. Jader's been in terribly tough. Oh, when you talk about the Wilbur, Massachusetts, Brazilian uh, yeah. traveling troop, Jader is probably the most, I would say, uh, crafty. Of, I would say of out bunch. of Rodrigo's Junction, the popular yes. uh, training camp in Wilburn, I think uh, Jader is by far the most talented boxer. Yes. Yeah. Some great MMA fighters out of that gym. So definitely certainly wants to protect himself. But Ray Oliveira, he wants to get a win, he, you know, eight and three, and he's fought a lot of great fighters in the New England area. Uh, this is the first time we get to see him in a Boston Boxing promotion ring. I'd imagine he's been training hard uh, during COVID and just wants to get back in the ring and get things going again. He's 30 years old, still got plenty of time left. But it's been a while since he's had a win. Yep. Yeah, he's been looking forward to this fight for a very long time, so hopefully he'll pull it out. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Uh, and Jader uh, fought last week here against Nate Balakin. Back-to-back weekend. Back-to-back weekend. So this guy is back at it again. Had a four-round uh, decision uh, defeat, but it was very entertaining in that yeah. bout. And it wouldn't be a Jader fight without a little bit of downtime. So hashtag where's Jader? That was the running joke last week. So not sure where he is right now, but we're killing a little bit of time. Uh, but once again, uh, just want to thank all you guys for tuning into the Boston Boxing Promotions uh, uh, stream. My name is Gray Johnson, here with Chris J, Scott Sullivan. Uh, it's been a pleasure getting to call fights with you guys the last this, the third week in a row now. So we'll take a little bit of a break. We'll be back in September. Awesome. but It's been great. But it's been great, man. Yeah, and I also want to point out to everybody listening, one of the things that Gray, you and I were very excited about is the first ever box Boston Boxing training card set. Yes, sir. There are is a training card set, 25 different stars of the Boston Boxing Universe, including the Tony DeMarco rookie card. In wow. his illustrious career, he's never had a trading card. And they've been on sale at these shows, and we will be selling them online starting Monday. So Great. if you are a fan of uh, first off boxing trading cards like Gray and I are, I would say that we are quick to nerd out on that oh. subject. Uh, uh, one of our favorite things to talk about. 25 card set on sale this week at bostonboxingpromotions.com. Uh, it's going to be great. It's a, the, there are only a few left. I think there's 20 sets left after tonight. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they will be on Very sale. Very limited. It's 150 sets. Once they're gone, they're gone. They've been on sale all three yes. nights of, of the bash. And uh, we'll have a couple online for the card collectors out there, the Dan Raphael's of the world, if you will. <laughs> yes, we'll have them online at BoxingNH.com. Like, there aren't a lot of boxing cards getting made these days. I don't no. care what level it is. Club, national, there's not a lot of boxing cards. And Chris and I, I we, you know, we worked hard on these cards. We're, these were our baby for the yeah. last few weeks, yeah. so we're really excited. They came uh, out great, too. They're beautiful-looking cards. Yes. Yeah. They're definitely a worthy uh, addition to your collection. So. And, and it is the Tony DeMarco rookie. I can't say yes. it enough. You know, a legend like that has never had a card. I'm glad that you and I were able oh. to even facilitate that. Absolutely. So, again, Fall Brawl, September 24th. So get your tickets if you're in the New, uh, the New England area and get those cards because they are those those sets. Like I said, we've sold most of them already at yeah. these shows. And really, we were only going to sell them online if we had some left. It wasn't really sure yeah. if we were going to need to. And, and most importantly, we have to admit that there is a great Johnson rookie card. <laughs> and the great uh, Johnson rookie card has a photo that is a homage to a very uh, well-known uh, KO card from yes, the 90s. Uh, the Randy, if, you, if you have the 1991 KO Randy the Kamish Gordon card, yes. you'll see the reference. And there's also a Chris J card in there. That as that well. is right. That is right. So I think the Scott Sullivan card might have to be coming soon. Yeah, set two. Series 20, two set. I wasn't going to say nothing, but I didn't hear my name. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> well, so Series 2. I think Series, series two, 2 we're going to bring you, you in, know, brother. And I, it's got to be a picture of you playing the national anthem, which you oh, raised. It has, to be, it has to be on you in the guitar. And I want to say something really quick about that, Scott. I told you I wanted to mention it earlier. I like how you kept it more Woodstock 69 than Woodstock 99. It was mu it was a very classy rendition, you know? <laughs> yeah, and I, I tried to use the chance to... Uh, I tried to do it in a way where I culminated a lot of my inspirations and guys I looked up to, but I tried to make it a little uh, Eddie Van Halen tribute at the end. <laughs> I, I, I just love that you brought the whole rig. I was watching. I was not not here last week, and I was watching at home. I was like, Scott brought his rig. I was waiting to see like a little practice amp. It was so awesome that you had the whole setup. No, I'm, I'm a, a musician and a roadie. So as we wait for the entrance of Ray Oliveira Jr., I just want to give a quick shout-out. I see Shelly Vincent. Uh, 
Uh, Giving oh. support for Amanda Pavone, an excellent fighter. She knows ways. Yes. Great. Talented, she's, talented She's fighter. barely missed. She was a real yes. cornerstone of female boxing in the New England I area. I watched many of her fights. Yeah. She was excellent. And uh, speaking of great fighters that I, I really, I'm glad I got to meet, uh, Laquan Lightning Lewis, who is also in the card set. Oh, Laquan Lewis. Look, look at Patrick Connor. He says, get me them <laughs> cards. <laughs> he we, would love them. He would love them. We appreciate everybody uh, tuning in. So, Lacon Lewis, uh, his uh, first short film, Fentanyl, is currently in pre-production. Oh. Currently in pre-production. Oh, Hopefully we see that released next year. A boxer and a uh, filmographer. So here, let's go to the intro for this fight. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this next contest is scheduled for four rounds in the welterweight division. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Wearing black trunks with gold trim. He comes to us from nearby Birmingham, Massachusetts. A lot of love for New Bedford in this crowd. Ray Oliveira yeah. Jr. getting a very nice ovation. We Taking on Jader Alves to Oliveira. Yeah, we picked the wrong weekend for Scott to play the anthem. He should have done it this weekend. <laughs> I was going to say. He would have set the place on fire. New Bedford would have been in the house. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of knew it was going to be like that. That's oh. why I was nervous. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm really excited for this fight. I think it could be really interesting. I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen, quite frankly. You know? yeah. Before it begins, I want to give a shout-out to my boys, Ernie Green. Hashtag the chat. Always showing us love and friends of mine as well. Thanks for tuning in, guys. All right, round one of four. Once Ray. again, Ray Oliveira Jr. against J Jader Alves de Oliveira. You can already see from Jader, Chris, a very unorthodox stance. Yeah. But it's oddly effective. Look how he just dodged <laughs> that huge shot, you know? And J Jader, man. Yeah. Throws those sneaky counters. That's what, you know, he, this is a guy that knows how to protect himself in the ring, but Ray Oliveira, I think, always, hungry for a win. Jader really keeps those hands down. He prefers to just kind of throw his head yes. in, in an unorthodox uh, style for his defense. And for Ray Oliveira Jr., just, you know, keep focusing there. You don't want to get sloppy because that's when Jader can take advantage yeah. of you. He wants but, to be patient in there. Like Jader just landed that sneaky little right hook. Nice jab nice by Ray. Jab by that, that's yeah. what he needs to do. Just walk him down behind the jab. Landed Jader with the overhand. And let me tell you, Jader throwing some more punches than I see normally from yeah. him. He's more, normally mostly a defensive guy. Uh, oh. He's taking some chances in there, but Oliveira getting, big, getting over to them. Big overhand right from yeah. Oliveira. It's a competitive one so far. Yeah. Oliveira clearly the more technical fighter. Oh. Oliveira well schooled, but Jader nice schooled in survival. <laughs> schooled in survival, the Gray Johnson story. That's oh. <laughs> so awesome. <laughs> I see the Camacho comparison. Yeah. He's definitely, uh, he definitely can teach you some stuff in there. Oh, nice awesome. body shot by Beautiful Oliveira. body shot. That man caught him. Jader's always smiling, too. I love that. He's having fun in there. Yeah. He knows he knows what his role is. Uh, and he's definitely in there to give you a fight. He's in there to try. But oh, he takes a lot of punches, man. This guy is crazy coming back a week later. God bless him. Nice body shot there by Oliveira. I'm really, really impressed. That's like how he doubled up the hook. Yep. Of course, Ray Oliveira's dad... Uh, one of the most exciting New England fighters of, yeah. uh, that I grew up watching. What would you say his father's peak was, Greg? Ooh, I would say when he challenged for the WBO championship. Yeah, that would have to be it. I think that was probably his best moments, um, but he also had an amazing fight against Vince Phillips. Ben Tacky sticks out to me as well. Okay. Um, just so many great wars on Friday Night Fights. I loved watching yeah, he Ray was Oliveira. He Friday Night Fights oh. staple. Yeah. Absolutely a pleasure watching him, um, getting to grow up watching it's him. He's a, a bit of a legend around here, really. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Every time, anytime I see him in the crowd, I always say hi because uh, to me, it's just I I'm watching uh, somebody that really is a big reason why I got into boxing. And, and sometimes the, the 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 respect that guys at that level get as years go by really dwindles, and I don't I don't think that's fair. I think they should get the same accolades as somebody that champion was. Oh, that is great! I got Jader. slipping through. Uh, 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 <laughs> they all there says, I don't know, man. Bring it. I, he doesn't. Anytime a guy <laughs> shakes his head, he at least is acknowledging to the judges. Yeah. He's been hit, even if he wasn't hurt. Jada's slick, man, but Ray Oliveira, I mean, again, this is a Ray Oliveira Jr. round for yeah. sure. 
and he's, and he's laying it on here on Jader right before the bell, putting the, putting the uh, exclamation point on. But a competitive round one. But you can tell Jader, Jader grimacing there in the corner. He yeah. felt those body shots. Yeah, that was, a, that was a tough round for him at the end there. I mean, he, he, t he was taking the punches pretty well. Right there, was putting the business on him. Yeah, he, he was. I, I'm trying not to say too many good things about him. I don't want to be biased. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about Jader. Yeah. He was letting him go, though. No, you, no uh, doubt your boy. It was, was his round. <laughs> for sure. I think one of those body shots really affected Jader. There's yeah. one where he sort of grimaced and walks back a little bit. He's breathing pretty hard in the corner here, but hey, the guy is a tough guy. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I think if there's one knock on Jader is that he tends to leave his mouth open when he fights, and that is a well, no-no, really. He literally just drops his hands sometimes and just tries to use his torso to kind of move the, yeah. uh, the shot. Hands down, uh, mouth guard usually exposed. You can, get a, you can get a jaw broken that way for sure. Uh, so that's one thing I think if you say for Jader, you want to keep that want to keep that mouth closed. He has a better smile so far, though. Yeah. I will say that. <laughs> All right, round two of four. Again, Ray Oliveira against Jader Alves de Oliveira. It's New Bedford versus Framingham. Ray throwing those body shots, man. Jader, Jader keeps landing some sneaky punches. you got to give him credit. Jader Absolutely. just drops that lead hand so much. He just keeps it down, and it's almost a defensive thing. If, if Ray comes over the top with a, you know, maybe an overhand right, I think that would be the Sunday punch for him. But this is what Jader does, guys. Jader is, he's, they say Tim Wakefield for the Red Sox used to throw. He was an innings eater. This guy's a round eater. Yeah. <laughs> he goes. He goes Smiling, rounds. loving it. Uh. He needs merchandise. Oh, that's what it comes down to. I wish Jader would just fight as just Jader and all just Jader in capital letters. Yeah. Look at him. I mean, both guys going for it. Oh, absolutely. Know? Jader always is going. He's at least trying to throw some bombs. Now, are they always landing? Not necessarily, but he's trying in there. But yeah, Ray Oliveira Jr., the more technically sound fighter. And a guy that said he's, if you look at his record, oh, oh nice I, overhand though by Jader. I think that definitely caught Ray Oliveira Jr. Uh, by surprise. I, I think that threw him off for a second. But, but yeah, right back on the jab. Yeah, if you look at Ray Oliveira Jr.'s record, a guy that's definitely been tested every time out. Yeah. Again, thanks for joining us on the stream. This is the seventh of 10 pro fights tonight here at the Castleton. We got some exciting ones coming up, God knows. Amanda we got Amanda Pavone, Pavone coming up next. And then Chris Jacobs, and then our main event with Brandon Berry. Should be an exciting rest of the night. Thanks for, for hanging in. A B A USA title. Yes, major ten round title. fight. Ten round fight. Brandon free Berry, and on YouTube. Travis Castellone. Yeah, we're giving you an NABA title fight for free, and we hope you're tuning in. Oh, nice, nice left hook by Oliver and Jader. Right. Definitely stumbled back a bit. Right on the temple. Another, oh, another man. lead left hand. Oliver really starting to have success now here in round two. Yeah, I think the uh, the body work from Ray is really starting to show up. Yeah, I see Jader moving around a lot less here, guys. Yeah. Again, very entertaining round, though. Jader uh, switching to southpaw. Good body shots by Ray oh. again. Oh. He heard him with that one. Jader definitely felt that. Jader felt that body yeah. shot. He's Another overhand shot there by Oliveira. This has been a good round, oh, guys. Oh, oh, Jader with gets all one, two upstairs. Taking so many shots. And then Jader throws his own <laughs> uppercut. You just gotta love it, man. Such a great effort here by Jader, guys. Jader's trying to oh. And the warning bell for the end of round to number two. Jader has discovered the uppercut, guy. Oh. That was a fun round. That was a very fun round, guys. Yeah. Again, I think another round for Ray, no doubt. But still oh, fun, absolutely. But still a fun round. Definitely. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but these guys are coming. <laughs> to, they're coming to fight. Oh my gosh. They're coming to fight tonight. This this man Jada has had every reason to take a knee. Yeah. Say, hey. I'm done. I, I've I've done what I've had to do. This he he really he's gonna go out in this third round with the intentions of landing something and winning. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what makes it fun. Those are the opponents you like to see. Oh, it's really like, it's it like I've said these last two weeks, I keep repeating it. Without guys like this, boxing doesn't exist. Yes, oh, absolutely. We need them. Again, guys, we've got three more fights coming up. Amanda Pavone, Chris Jacobs, and Brendan Berry, all in action.
Really excited for that Brendan Berry fight. I think that's a very evenly matched 50-50 type of fight. I think we could have a lot of fireworks. Oh, absolutely. It will be a fun one, guys. Got number three or four. Coming up here at the Castleton. Whoa. Ray tries to catch him on guard <laughs> with a real big sweeping left hook. I'd like to see Ray step to his right a little bit. He keeps letting Jader off the hook. He's following him. He's not cutting the ring off. Yeah, yeah what would you like to see more from, from, from Ray this round, Scott? I'd just like to see him work the jab and, and, like I said, cut the ring off. Step to his right every time Jader steps to his left and see Ray's just follow him around the ring here when you should step to the right and keep him on the rope. Nice lead hook. But the body work is looking it's really good. Yeah. He needs to keep working the body, and, and this could be an early night. Oh, another nice lead These up. These shots just pinball up Jader's yeah. head, and he takes Not to man. mention that they're opening up the head shots. Jader's the type of guy that you'd run into at the Big Punch Arena and, and, <laughs> and regret taking the fight. You know Absolutely. what I mean? He'd be like 20-0 and 0 down at Big Punch. Oh, I think those body shots are just accumulating right now. John Ferrara saying it is the battling all of Aris, man. <laughs> it really is. It's, uh, it's a fun one. Yeah, you know what, Jader makes up for, and it you know, may not be the most talented guy, but definitely has a ton of heart. Yeah, and he gives these guys good work. I mean, you know, there's a lot of prospects oh, up absolutely. here that have had their first four-rounder against Jader. Yeah, Jader is the perfect pro debut opponent, in my opinion. It's pretty tough for a pro debut, oh. the way guys are matched, yep. you know, in this day and age. Let me tell you, Ray Oliveira Jr.'s last win was in uh, September 2017 against David Wilson, and he's 5-1-1 uh, oh. entering that fight. And I know Ray those, Oliveira those, wants to get back in the winning circle. I think we could get close to a stoppage here. Those yeah, body Jader, shots really oh, good. Yeah, really starting to lay on now. Ray Oliveira Jr. doing a great job. Yeah. Jader's definitely running out of gas. Yeah. Kind of seems like Ray's looking for the big shot. I'd like to just see him stay busy on them instead yes. of just looking for the blast. Yeah, if Ray just did more of a workmanlike way about it, just walking in, jabbing, throwing short, precise shots, he'll get this guy out of here. But see right here, he should step over to the right. He keeps letting Jader off the ropes. Oh, nice, nice right hand. hand. Nice right hand. Nice right hand from Ray. This is what he needs to do, just walk in and just be busy. Right there, go to work. The body shots oh. really. The body's really starting to show Jader up. Really, really starting to feel these punches, guys. He's not even protecting his head anymore. I don't think a stoppage would be. Yeah, I, I think too. Leo popping in yeah. here might not be a bad idea. He's Jader's really starting to get the. Uh, get st really starting to feel it. He's he's moving backwards. I think Leo's taking a good look here. Man, Jada is tough. This oh, man will not oh, crumble. That was a loud yeah. body shot, Chris. Ooh, what a roll oh. to the body. And Jader throws back. Yeah, I was just saying, that's how Jader can hang in in these fights, is that despite the beating that he takes, he, he does throw back, too. and he gets through the third round. I didn't think he was going to get through that round. Jader looks, he's, he's taking it. He's trying hard. End of the third round. It's war Jader here at the castle. We might have to talk to Pete and give him a bonus tonight. Oh, this yeah, this yeah. guy is tough as nails. Free night at the uh, the Red Roof Inn. The Red Roof Inn, Salem, Massachusetts. Salem, Massachusetts, that's a $62 value. Yeah. Anyway, so. Um, they take very good care of Boston Boxing. They are me. great. So all comedy must cease, even though I've got a few for you, Gray. But I'm <laughs> no, put them in the we, no, let me tell you, we love the them staff there. at the Red Roof are so yeah, nice absolutely. and so accommodating. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, rep, rep, rep in Salem, NH. Yeah. Salem, New Hampshire. Salem, New Hampshire. Yeah. We got a phone one here, guys. Yes. Uh, and, and Scott, your guy's looking great. I mean, no doubt, you know, he's about to close to closing the show. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just trying to pick on him because I have to. <laughs> I know he's your boy. But I'll tell you what, Jada is a tough guy. Yeah. This, this, he's impressing me. This will be interesting to see if Ray gets a stoppage. Fourth that's, and that's final round. Now. The question, exactly. The question is, does Jader get through the fourth round, or is Ray Oliveira going to get the stoppage here? I know Ray Oliveira, only one knockout in his career. I'm sure he'd love another one. Oh, so. wow. And sure. I can tell you that one knockout's deceiving because he does punch hard. Yeah. I can tell you really from tough. experience. He's been in tough. I mean, yeah, see, when he was at CES, they were not mashing him yeah. easy. And then look at this guy. He's fighting a guy that could fight King Kong and not get knocked down. <laughs> I said it last week about Augustin Cicero. I'll say it about Jader. You gotta hit the guy with a bat to take him out. Yeah. It's it's 
The amount of punishment this man can take is incredible. And then he still sneaks a little uppercut in there like that. You gotta love it. What heart. Yeah. Always always trying to throw an overhand. But uh only you know, that's what I like about Jair. Always gonna try and win. Boxing needs more opponents like this that want to go the four rounds and try the whole time. You know? I think Ray Oliveira Senior has gotta be happy with Ray Oliveira is uh switching up the body and head attack tonight. Yeah. I've seen a lot of good work from him and I can tell that he's been training hard and really wanted this comeback. Yeah. He's really close to the stoppage. He's just always like, it seems like one yeah. punch and then away. Jader, and yeah. then it's just the Jader specialty, right? He yeah. gets rocked, he gets yeah. hit, and then he throws one or yeah. two. To keep him in the fight, to let the ref know that I'm still here. Oh, Ray's letting him go. <laughs> Ray wants that stoppage ban, oh, Scott. There's no doubt about it. Leo giving uh, Jader warning, don't lead with the head. Jader gets worn by the refs a lot, and I think a lot of times it's unfair. I think, I I think he's just a little unorthodox. He got DQ'd against Harry Gigliotti that back was, in, during the pandemic era. I thought that was a terrible call. And that was a very quick hook. Yes, but he definitely does lose points for holding uh, Camacho-like tactics. And that, speaking of guys that would get deducted points in their fights. He's got those Camacho trunks, too. Michelle from the Red Roof in. Yeah. Thank you guys for a shout out. We love you, Michelle. Thank you for being so kind to us at the front desk. Whoa, big hook. That could have ended the show. Absolutely. Jader employing the infamous head to crotch defensive tactic. <laughs> <laughs> this has been a fun one, guys. Yeah, it really has. And then Jade, just when you think he's going to get stopped. Jader throws a shot just to stay alive. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, Mouthpiece out. And look at this. Leo's going to, he spits up the mouthpiece. But it, even though I think they stopped the clock, he still bought a little bit of time. Oh, he needs it. He yeah. needs every second he can get right now. Little veteran move. Oh. That's what you got it. This is the little things. This is the difference between a guy that gets knocked down the first round and a guy like Jader who can go four rounds. He 100%. knows the little things to survive. These are the guys that I love. This is good experience for fighters when you get a Jader in there. Absolutely. I hope Jader one day gets a win, man. He deserves it. He's a hard worker. and I, could, I couldn't agree with you more. I'd love to see him get a yeah. win one day. But anytime he's in that ring, that potential exists. Warning bell here, end of the fourth. Jader's going to make it to the bell. Oh! oh. <laughs> Jader winging! Ray <laughs> winging! All right, Jader. Oh. And there it is. Ray Oliveira Jr. is going to pick that up. Uh, one, one. That's going to be a, a clear unanimous decision when he won every single round. Credit to Jader for hanging in. Yeah, and, and I think Ray Oliveira just picked up his ninth professional win. Because. Uh, <laughs> so guys, we have three more fights to, uh, ready to go. But hey, listen, don't forget, we got a we got a card coming up. Uh, we, we, sorry, before we go there, let's go to the replays. You can see a nice little exchange there at the end of the bell. Very fun fight between Jader Alves Oliveira and Ray Oliveira. The battle of the Oliveiras. Ray Oliveira Jr. has got to be pleased with that performance. But yes, uh, before we get to the uh, other three fights tonight, remember. Fall Brawl is coming to the Castleton. This arena right here, September 24th. Doors at 6. First fight's going to be at 7 o'clock. Get your tickets now. BoxingNH.com. Nothing beats like uh, seeing boxing live. Come be part of this experience. Come enjoy live boxing. Uh, again, BoxingNH.com. Get your tickets. we got plenty of uh, young fighters who are getting their careers moving. Guys like Alejandro Polino, Kevin Walsh, Nick Molina, uh, Nate Balakin, uh, Michael Bolger, Sean Bay. Plenty, and you never know who's going to pop in a Boston Boxing Promotions ring, so I'm sure there'll be surprises too, Scott. But, you know, you've been here now. It's your third week in a row. It's quite an atmosphere here. It's nothing beats it. There's nothing like a local boxing club show because the fans are actually there for their guy. You know? Absolutely. And we're very, uh, you know, I'm, I feel very blessed to be able to call these shows. Uh, it's been a really fun time, a great couple weeks. I know you've had a good time, Scott. You played that right. anthem. You've been on the mic. You've been a man yeah. of many trades. So, uh, well, he <laughs> introduced me as a Renaissance man. So I was like, man, I gotta live up <laughs> yeah, to yeah, that. Yeah, I gotta live up. up to that now. <laughs> Hey guys, we're just waiting on the scorecards here. I imagine they're going to be pretty wide. Uh, I think every round went for Ray Oliveira, of course. Ray Oliveira Jr. 
gets a nice workout in. He gets his uh, first uh, win back in a few years, so he's got to be pretty pleased about that, getting back on track. And at 30 years old, still plenty of time for him to make a dent in boxing. Yeah, I mean, 30 isn't what it used to be in boxing. I mean, back in the day, 30 was like a death sentence. You're turning 30, your career's over. But nowadays, with, you know, less fights, and you guys ain't fighting as often, and, you know, training training techniques have improved over the years so these guys they you know 40s the new 30 yes as they would say by the way matchmaker laquan lightning lewis saying jader versus bricks i want it <laughs> oh yeah i say jader versus at the world <laughs> absolutely i like to see him in a, in a fight where uh you know he, he's in a, he's in uh not necessarily as the b-side i mean it would be uh, good to see Again, we're just waiting for the scorecards here to be calculated. The judges tonight, John Mathis, Marfa Tremblay, Eddie Scunzio, and we've got Pete Zimbor in that very uh, snazzy suit, ready right, to give us the final scores. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm a of these warriors. After four hard fought rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Martha Tremblay, Eddie Scunzio, and John Mathis all score the fight the same, 40 to 36. For your winner, the unanimous decision, Ray Oliveira Jr. No surprise there, 40 36 down the uh, times three, you would say. Yeah, uh, yeah Ray Oliveira Jr., nine, uh, nine and three is a pro. Jay Rolfs, listen, he got through it. Yeah, He'll absolutely. Be back. Yet again, yet again. Always a great performance from him. Fun fight too. Fun fight. Yep. Now we got a. Now this fight coming up next. Uh, the ladies are going to be in action here in a four round super bantamweight fight, and uh, there's a lot um, really to talk about here. This is going to be a very important fight. Yeah. Uh, for Amanda Pavone. The return of Amanda Pavone, who was a really popular fighter out of the, uh, in, the, in Boston, especially. She's had quite a layoff though, especially with the pandemic. She's reemerged. She's re-signed with Boston Boxing promotions, currently undefeated, and she literally is in a position, Gray, where with really a win tonight, she could be in talks for a world title shot due to the state of yep. women's boxing right now. Yeah, I mean, it's no secret the, the waters in women's boxing tend to be a little bit shallow just because of the, the talent pool is not as, not as deep. So for her, even just getting a win tonight, getting that ninth pro win, uh, there could be opportunities knocking at the door as long as she yeah. keeps winning. But Again, looking at her box rec, yeah, uh, shout out to the fine people at boxrec.com, including you, Greg. I mean, <laughs> she's currently number two in the United States, number 27 in the entire world, with even with her record right now. Right. So one win tonight could literally propel her in an opportunity, especially over in Europe, where yes. there's a lot more opportunity for female fighters. Boston Boxing Promotions President Peter Zimbor is very high on Amanda, and he thinks it literally could be Boston Boxing Promotions' first world champion. Yeah. And standing in her way is going to be Jacob Pavillis, uh, coming all the way from New York City. And, uh, you know, one in three, but I have seen her fight personally. And I'll tell you right now, in women's boxing, there is not a lot of tune-up fights you get. You get thrown in pretty much right away. And she's been competitive with uh, other girls that were very good in the amateurs. Uh, so it's it's not it's not easy. It's no, uh, she's a very tough fighter. It's, it's yeah. not her. This record. is not going to be an easy walk in the yeah. park for Amanda Pavone. One hundred percent. On paper, it may look like that as one and three, but like you said, great tons of experience. Training right. constantly out of the New York City gym scene. She's a tough fighter. Absolutely. It's a tough fight for Amanda to come back. Amanda actually with a new trainer. She's currently working with Alex Rivera from Somerville, Boston. Yes, sir. Uh, trainer, of course, of Rashidi Ellis and Rashida Ellis, who is a 2020 Olympian, and John Ruiz. So she's definitely. Uh, I saw an article. She said she feels like she's learned so much from him in the last three weeks just training with him. Okay. So let's see if we see uh, uh, somewhat of an evolved Amanda Pavone. Yeah, it would be very interesting, especially, uh, you know, home of Rashidi Ellis. Arguably one of the fastest hands in professional boxing right now. Oh. Who do you think the fastest yes. puncher is, Greg? Right now, active boxer. Who's your Who's your number one fastest puncher? Uh, fastest hands in boxing yeah. right now? I would. You got to put Gary Russell up there. Yeah. Uh, yeah I mean, you, you talk about Rashidi for sure. Uh, trying to think about guys with fast hands. I mean, for a long time it was Amir Khan. But, was a, yeah, you know, so you could say Amir Khan's hands uh, very fast. Chris but, uh, Colbert. He looks yes. fast the other night, but he's probably Gary Russell, but Rashidi Ellis has to be in that conversation. We bring Rashidi up because he is undefeated. He is from, obviously, yep. the Boston, New England area, and uh, unfortunately, I think his career has uh, really just kind of been frozen. I mean, a yes. lot of promotional reasons. I heard there's a battle with his promoter, Golden Boy, but man, yeah. I always want to see him on the big national stage, and he just doesn't have the opportunity yeah. yet. He seems to always be like the almost there guy. Yeah. 
and we would love to see yeah, him get him that fight where we can see what it's all about. But, certainly, certainly. You know, a lot of politics go into that, obviously. But again, Amanda Pavone has recently joined the gym that Rashidi's out of. Um, always known for great sparring over there. Initial Absolutely. Home, the original home of John Ruiz. <laughs> So we're just waiting on entrances here. Man, hands of stone, Pavone. To take a nickname like that, whew, gotta be good, <laughs> gotta be good. Yes, here comes Jacob Avilas, of course. Entering the ring right now. You know, uh, we had a Shayna Papillon uh, on our first card of the Great American Bash. She was with that devastating knockout she had of Vanessa yes. Grimes. But people kind of wanted a more competitive fight out of that. And I think we're yeah. going to get that tonight. What I we're agree. hoping for in the Shayna fight, I think we'll have tonight with Amanda Pomos. Absolutely. Another lively crowd here, Greg. Absolutely. We're, it's, it's the best place to be for boxing. Come it, here. It's just a lot of fun. Everybody's in great spirits, and just it's great oh. to see. And there's so it's many, great. What's neat about interesting about the Massachusetts, New England area, especially myself coming from California, mm -hmm. it's almost like every city in this state, in these two states, has one professional fighter. <laughs> and it's unbelievable. <laughs> I, I, I drive down the 93, and I'm like, Stoneham, home of yeah, Greg yeah, yeah. And, you know, you keep going and going down the list. Sure, and Revere, sure. home of Travis Cameron Yes. And, every, and they all get together for these fights, and that's what makes it so exciting because there's definitely Burlington, Amanda Pavone. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Every place has their one fighter. You know, 100 people come from each city and you get them together on the same card. You have a massive show. Yeah, exactly. You get a great showing. A lot of a lot of scenes don't have that. Yes. A lot of people here tonight for Amanda Pavone. I see Ray Oliveira Sr., by the way, working the corner for uh, for Jacob Pavillas. So we've got Ray Oliveira. we got Alex Rivera. Yeah. This would be a good one, man. A lot of tongue twisters in the upcoming fight. Yes, a lot of tongue twisters. You have a very sweaty Gray Johnson right now uh, on, the, on the mic. I'll be, uh, it's definitely getting hot in here, uh, so I apologize. A very sweaty Gray Johnson, the sequel to the Hallmark movie, A Sweaty Gray Johnson. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 sounds a little weird. <laughs> the first movie was so popular with the underground yeah. community. That. Yeah. <laughs> So Amanda Pavone, like I said, looking to get that ninth pro in, uh, and we'll be doing it over four three-minute rounds, Chris. This is not a two-minute round fight. And why is that? Uh, that is because they both agreed to it. And in New Hampshire, you can fight three-minute rounds for the ladies get if you want here. to. Yes, really? this is a three-minute really? round fight. Yes. That's, that's a fascinating, fascinating so, detail. Wanted okay. to drop that in, but we'll go to Pete Zimbor for those introductions. This this division. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner to my left. She's sporting silver trunks with red trim. Coming to us from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, a Boston Boxing Promotions welcome for Jacob Pavillas. And her opponent, standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right. Tonight, competing for the first time in over two years. Sporting solid black trunks and coming to us from nearby Burlington, Massachusetts. say, you know, Peter Zimbor, the heart and soul of Boston Boxing Promotions and also the announcer. Um, that was a hell of a call right there. That was a hell of an intro. <laughs> That's how you fire people up, yeah, man. Yeah. Pete Zimbor is the jack of all trades. Yeah, and, and just such a oh, sh quick shout out to him before the oh fight starts. The, the, the work that he has put in to put these three shows basically have caused him seven or eight ulcers, but he's done it for the fans. He's yes. brought this boxing to them and uh, Manus Bavone now signed to Boston Boxing Promotions. And I also, before as we wait for the bell uh, ring here, I want to give a shout out to our great production team. Again, once again, crystal clear, crisp stream from the whole crew. Uh, they're phenomenal to work with, and they always get the job done. So here we are, round one of four. This is going to be a tense one, I think. Super Bantamweights, Amanda Pavone, Black Trunks, yeah. Jacob Pavillas in the gray. I guess that's gray. Checkered Trunks? But anyway, Amanda Pavone ducking down, throwing lots of hooks. Again, yeah, I expect a lot of punches to be thrown here. Pavone kind of le looping those shots a little bit. I think she should straighten them out. She'd have a little more success. I see the hit maker on the back of the trunks of Pavillas. And definitely looks like the bigger fighter of the two. Uh, Pavillas is uh, kind of throwing a nice jab out there. I mean, I think that's the best thing you're going to have to do with Pavone is to keep her on the end of that jab. It's so when she gets inside where she's going to do that work. Oh, yeah, I mean, Pavillas went to the finals of the New York Golden Gloves in 2019, Chris. Right. So she's... 
no slouch. For Amanda, she was a uh, 2016 uh, Olympic Trials finalist, or Olympic Trials participant. Yeah. Nice double jab there. A few seconds ago from Pernod. Oh! <laughs> a nice little flurry there. Very interesting fight so far. Absolutely. Pavilis looks significantly bigger than Pavone, though, huh? Does. You can definitely tell uh, she had to, uh, Pavilis had to come down and wait for this. Yeah, no doubt. Oh, Pavilis with a nice overhand nice, right. Nice overhand yeah. shots. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, thank you guys for tuning in to this stream, Boston Boxing Promotions. We're glad to have you. Nice body shot from Pavilis. Pavone coming up short on a lot of those combinations there, Greg. Pavilis' last time out was in uh, June 9th, my birthday actually, in Long Beach, California. Fought on a Oscar De La Hoya uh, show. Not a Golden Boy show, but it was one of his uh, projects, a studio show that yeah, he... Uh, I don't think anyone to this day knows what exactly that was, including I, Oscar De La Hoya himself. <laughs> it had power bars over yeah. the opponent's heads. Yeah. Seemed like it was uh, targeted at the young kids, but... Yeah. Uh, she was very competitive in that defeat to so an uh, Anello Lopez. Too much Lopez. cocaine in video games. So oh, you, that you, card. you heard that from Chris J, not Gray Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was actually Scott Simon over there. <laughs> yeah, we don't, know where cool. Scott, we don't know where Scott went, but we're going to blame it on him. But again, this is a very competitive fight. I see Amanda going to the body early as yeah. well. Pavilis is timing really well. If you notice, she's just taking that quick step back. Every time Pavone comes in, Pavone's got the shorter arms. As soon as Pavone comes in to take a shot, she tends to step back. Again, right there. Three minute rounds, not two minute rounds tonight. Oh, nice. Hook from Pavone. Probably the first clean shot she's landed. Warning bell for the end of the first round here. I assume this is a three minute round. I wish I had time. I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna actually going to time the next round just to make sure these are three minute Both rounds. Both fighters trying to steal the last 10 seconds. It's fun, right? Very competitive oh. round one. This is, like I said, this is not going to be an easy, easy fight tonight for uh, Amanda Pavone. Great, Jake, how did you have that first round? Honestly, I gave it to Pavone, but it, I could think that could have gone either way. I think I'm going to go the other way. I think Pavilis Ooh. did a little more. Yeah. Like I said, I, you know, Pavone has been out of the ring. Pavilis has been the one that's been active. She's the younger fighter. This, this could be, this could be right for an upset. You yeah. never know. But of course, Amanda Pavone's Pavone, going to have to cut that distance off. Yeah. though. She's got to get in a little closer to work. All right, we got two more fights after this, guys. Uh, Chris Jacobs and then Brandon Berry in our 10-round main event for the NABA oh. Championship against Travis Castellano. Cannot wait for that one. Should be a barn burner. This is the eighth of 10 fights tonight. We appreciate you hanging in with us. Man, Here. hands of stone <laughs> A lot of great crowd for her tonight. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot of people turned out for her. All right, round number two of four. And I'm going to put the timer on. And make sure this is actually a three-minute round. Yeah. Glove touch, glove touch, but uh, obviously that was a slip. Yeah. Nice little overhand there from Pavone. She's kind of coming in with her head down, which is... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice shot from Pavilis. Very kind shot. of windmilling in, a little bit yeah. wide, but Whoa, both both are, Yeah, this is, these two are not afraid to trade hooks here. Look at this. <laughs> this is a pace, ladies and gentlemen. What a barn burner here. It's a great exchange. I think we already got another banger. <laughs> here. Pavone's kind of looking down on when she throws her shots, which is, honestly, that's a, it's a pretty basic yeah. boxing one-on-one -on -one no-no. I'm surprised to see that from somebody as established as her. But I think it's because her opponent's so tall, she's just trying to come over the top, but it's given that, I mean, she's right for uh, yeah. an uppercut, Greg. I mean, Jake is, you got to say, two, three inches taller at yeah. least. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big uh, size difference. Like I yeah. said, pretty tough opponent when you've been out of the ring uh, yeah. for all of 2000, uh, 2020 <laughs> yeah. due to COVID. And, so. and sometimes it's tough. I mean, just that little that little distance that you need to cut off, that comes with being active in the ring and active with your sparring. Sure. If you haven't done that in a while, sometimes it takes fighters a, a few rounds to just get on that, and that's when in a four, when does a four round fight, Greg? That's right. something we should point out to our viewers. I think they're probably thinking this is a six, eight round fight. It's four. <laughs> it's four. You it's going to go quick. Uh, 
you know, Gray, I'm going to say something, and maybe it's a little too... Oh, nice shots from Pavone. Oh! And Pavone answers right back. This has been a good fight, guys. Yeah. Pavone looks a little gassed. Am I crazy to say that? I, that little motion she's the, doing the, the, the mouth breaks. is The mouth is open. She's standing back, looks like she's taking a big gasp. I don't know if that's a stylistic thing, but it gives me the impression she's a little tired. Right there, do you see that? Yes. And she's, touch, she's got this little, this little tick almost when she touches <laughs> her gloves or her knees. This has been a barn burner of a fight, man. She, they both, she, they're both grinding it out in there. And this is indeed over, this is indeed over three rounds, so I'm not crazy. Uh, three minute rounds, I gotcha. should say. Three, four minute rounds. Don't see that very much in women's boxing, but I think that is the trend that we should be going in. Oh, that was a nice little chopping shot over over top there by Jacob Pavillis. And then she's just, she's landing that jab twice in a row. I think Pavone has some serious swelling on her forehead too, Greg. That's a good catch. Yeah, I, 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 I keep going back to it, but she's got this little move that she does where she like touches her thighs with her gloves. Oh, oh and down goes, no, no, oh. they're gonna call that a slip, but I don't know, I don't know about that. It was still a punch, it was still I a punch. I don't know about that, Jackie Moreau. It was still a punch. It was a slip, but we're gonna need it. We're gonna need to see an instant replay right. of that bad boy. We're the boys in the booth, warming it up. Competitive round number two, I'm gonna have to take another look at that. And here we go, here's the replay. Looking closely here. There was a punch in there, I think, Chris. Maybe a little push. Maybe it was yeah, a bit of a push. I saw a little bit of a push there. Yeah. That's a close one. That's a border. That's a borderline. That's a borderline call, man. I think man. you have to give that round to Pavillis, which means you're looking at a one-one fight, or you're looking at a two-zero fight at this point, right? Yeah. Now, I think uh, Shelly Vincent, by the way, an actual fighter, uh, said she uh, said would like to see. Uh, us get women fight, fighters get paid the same as men if they're going to do the three minute rounds. Why give more for less? So I definitely understand yeah, that a, argument. Very, very valid. valid that's point. a very valid point. That's a good point. Yeah, I agree. I think if uh, uh, Shirley Vincent's pointing out the pay scale uh, between men and women in boxing, it's very wide. Absolutely. And I agree and that. The, the I, excuse I think for that often is the two minute, two minute rounds. rounds. And I think what she's pointing out is yes. yo, if it's three, let's if go. If it's three, let's pay us more. Open, well, we got, open the purse. We, we've got a great fight on our hands. We do. I really think Pavone needs these two rounds. I, I think whether it's a win or a draw, she needs needs to bank these two rounds. I agree. And I think you kind of could see it, Adam Amanda Pavone, uh, Chris, she's yeah. fighting with a lot going more. Hard, going hard. Yep. Really nice jab from Pavillis I You gotta love it. Yeah. Her timing's been really good. This has been a good fight. Yeah. I'd like to see Pavone jab in a little more, like she just did there, versus yes. just trying to come in with the looping shots. Do we know if Scott's coming back? <laughs> I hear he just disappeared oh, on so us. Scott, Scott went to see his boy Ray. Wanted to get his <laughs> Congratulations. Ah, Boom. got it. There's got that it. uppercut that I thought Pavilla should throw. Caught her with two big shots there. I mean, Pavone's missing those shots, Brad. Oh, and again, I, I agree with you, man. She's definitely getting bullied in there. Yeah. And again, she's the one stepping to the canvas, yeah. getting frustrated. There's a visual to that. You know, even if you like what Pavone's doing, you know, the slips, the falling. See, that's good work. Yeah. That's where she's got to go. But Pavone's this is this is a good, this is a good, a tremendous fight. And uh, Shelly Vincent also pointing out, women train on threes, and they uh -huh. fight in three-minute rounds in the yeah. amateurs, but. You gotta show us the money. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think that's definitely completely valid. We're on your side on that one. And I think with an effort like this, these ladies deserve to get paid yeah. just as much as the men. The best fights of the night by yeah, far. Yeah, they're giving it their all in the ring, my friend. Now, now that's where Provo needs to work. When she gets in there, she's gotta bang out three, four, yes. five shots. She can't just settle for those one or two shots because as soon as Pavillis gets the distance, you know, she has to work her way back in. Oh, nice, nice shot right there by Pavillis. Right, right, right on the temple. Again, I think this is Stunt a Pavillis round. And, and listen, this is this is a this is Jacob Pavillis' moment right here. Yeah. This is her chance to put her on the map. She's in there against an undefeated fighter that people are talking about a world title fight. Nice shot from Pavon. Yes, there she goes. That's, that's what you got to do to try and win back around yeah. that you're, it was falling out of the cracks. Yeah. And now it's close again. Great fight, great yeah. fight. You get the feeling that Pavilis is trying to uh, load up on her right. Yes. Come on, 
this has really been a good one, man. Yeah. This fourth round is going to be absolutely pivotal. Yeah, it is. I love Pavilis' jab. I mean, she's fighting the right fight against Amanda Pavone. Absolutely. She has come here with a very good game yeah. plan. And she clearly, I think this is a clear round for her. Better activity, stronger yeah. punches. But, but in your sense, it's a clear round for her, but Pavone also had her probably best oh, moment she did. in the whole fight. She did. She had a very good moment wow. there, but I think overall, body of work, you got to go with Jaka. Fourth round coming up, Chris. So, this has so been a good one. Face off your card from what you've told us so far. You, you think Pavone needs the this final round absolutely. For, a draw, for a draw. For a draw. For a draw. Yep. I think she's, I think she's yeah. behind. I think she either needs hit for the draw or she's in a position where she needs a knockout. And Pavone is, she seems very tired over there. There's no doubt. I mean, Pavilla seems tired, but Pavone, she's gasping. It's been a long time since she's been in the ring. Great fight tonight, though. Yeah, this Great has been fight. a good one, man. This last round is going to be very, very important yeah. for the career of Amanda Pavone right now. Yeah. She needs this round, I think, very badly. And again, it's just, this is what she needs to kind of stay on track if she wants to get that world title shot. Yeah. You know, quite frankly, I mean, a knockdown for either fighter in my Oh, would change bank. the change. It puts, puts the fight, it gives the fight. Yeah. And it, Pavone yeah. has to show something here. She has to go all out. Yep. She needs this round big. She can't let it be close. And here they go. And Jaka wants it bad as well. Again, I'm glad this is a three-minute round fight. Yeah. Just from an action standpoint. Yeah, because and that's what happens with the two-minute rounds. You, it, it, things start to heat up, and they're already back in the corner. Yeah. This, tonight's fight is a great testament for women fighting three-minute rounds. Oh, and they just better get paid <laughs> to do it, you know? Get the equal pay for, for extra minute of work each round. Yeah, but this has been a great fight. Great. Pabone's letting them go this round. Yep. She's doing exactly what she needs to do. The villain's jabbing. Nice, nice head movement for the villains. Nice uppercut. That uppercut. Oh! <laughs> uppercut and a lead left hook. What a nice little combination. Wow. But the way Pavone falls in, leaves her so open for the uppercut. There she goes. Oh! Nice counter right there. Pavone takes it though. I think you can kind of see Pavone's face definitely marked up, Chris. Got she's fighting hard. Oh, two big oh. shots. Both women fighting this their is, hearts out. They want this round yeah. badly. It's a must-win round, I think, for both fighters. This is incredible action. Nice body work from Pavone there. I would like to see that a little earlier. Oh, absolutely. What a fight. Thank you for everybody who's watching this on the stream right now. Yeah, really we're, we are privileged to have you. I see Rashida Ellis from Team USA yeah. in the house. Congratulations. We watched you, uh, I watched you fight in the Olympics. Did a great job. What a Congratulations. Great, what a great professional she's going to be. We got a war here, Gray. Both ladies wow. playing hard shots. Yeah, whenever she wants to turn pro, she will be one to watch. Yeah. But uh, I think she might gun for Paris. I don't yeah. blame her either way. Absolutely. She's fun to watch regardless. What a hell of a fighter. Made the country proud. Yes. Meanwhile, Gray, this fight hangs in the absolute yes. balance. And both ladies are going hardcore. I don't know. I, I, I don't know who's going to. I don't know. I think Pavilis might have this, Chris. Yeah. Pavone looks down. Oh, great. Oh, wow. From Pavone. And Pavilis answers right back with a big right hand. Awesome fight. Pavone just looks exhausted. I, 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 I <coughs> she does. on that. Oh, another big uppercut. Both ladies going to war. <laughs> this is a four-round classic yeah, here at the Castleton. This, is, this right? is what club fighting is all about. This is Castleton boxing at its finest. Last 10 seconds. 10 seconds left Who here. It? Exactly. Who wants it more, ladies and gentlemen? Amanda Pavone, Jacob Pavillis, regardless. Amazing effort from oh, the ladies. Pavillis with the big over here. Oh. Wow, standing Great fight. ovation yeah. here at the Castleton. Standing ovation. That's a fight. That's wow. fight of the night. What and we're looking at the replays here. Man, these two grinded it out, leaning on top of each other. It was a bulldozer of an affair, Chris. And they have got to be pleased with that effort. This is the, yeah, we're looking at the last 30 seconds here of this uh, final round. Fighters just absolutely throwing it all out there. Oh. 
Why? Ray, talk to me. How, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. I this don't is a tough know. One. This is a tough one. I think Jacob Avilis won. I do. I think she edged it. I could see Jacob Avilis three one, and I could understand a draw. I yeah, don't I think Pavone yeah. won this fight. Though. You've nailed it on the head. I think my this friend. is very much similar to our main event of our first fight, Harry yeah. versus Brandon. <laughs> Harry won the fight, you right. know. I had him five mm -hmm. three. Yep. But I completely understand four four. But yeah. I couldn't understand five three for Brandon right. Higgins. And that was a big argument. I mean, that fight's still being talked about locally. I mean, you know, there's a lot of I don't want to say controversies in the right yeah. word, but a lot of people thought it was a draw, which I understand. But you couldn't mm -hmm. find the five rounds. And the exact same situation here. I don't find the three rounds for a man. <laughs> I don't either. I, I can see two. I, I can, can see, see two. two, but I don't see three. However, yeah. I think you can see three rounds for Pavillas. I agree. You know, this is going to be very. Yeah, this is going to be very, cards. very fascinating how these cards look, Chris. Yeah, I think they could be all over the place. You know, this this scream split draw. Great performance from both ladies. Though. Taking some time to get that decision. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, after four hard block rounds, I'm gonna run the class for both of these. I don't agree with that. Judge Eddie Scuncio scores the fight 39-37 for Jacob Pavillas. That's what I saw. Screaming split draw. Judge John Mathis scores the fight 38-38. Oh. I see a draw. I could definitely see a draw. I but I'll tell you, Amanda, I think, escaped with one. Yes, yes. Um, like we talked about, I can yeah. But that was, I want a rematch. Yeah. Both should be proud of that effort. That was the fight of the night. Yeah. And I can see the draw. Yep. Um, but I'm glad the, the wrong person didn't win. Yeah. You know. Um, I don't know about that card for Martha Tremley. He's usually a very 40, yeah, 40-37 for Pavone. I don't uh, see. 40, so, so I think it was I thought it was 40 37. Maybe I misheard it. Uh, but regardless, I, I, I don't, don't see think that card. Give her three rounds. I just don't yeah. see it. Oh, sorry. But, 30, it's 39 37. Yeah. What a hell of a fight, yeah. though. Hell yeah. of a fight. I understand the draw. I understand the yeah. draw. But even a draw, in a sense, Greg, yeah. was, a, was a huge upset. I'll in say this fight. I'll say it. Amanda Pavone. The crowd is into Jacob Avilis. The crowd that was on her side of the ring yeah. really appreciated her effort. Yeah. Great fight. I love to see a rematch between these two. Yeah. They both earned every dollar they made tonight. Yeah, absolutely. I just think Pavone had some ring rust. Yeah. I, I really think that she just seemed a little gas. She didn't seem to be totally herself. Yeah. Well said. Heck of a fight, though, Heck man. Of a fight. Heck of a fight. It'll be interesting to see where Amanda Pavone goes. Yeah. How you doing, Scott? Did you get to speak to uh, the good people of New Bedford? Yes, yes, I I delegated with the New Bedfordonians. New Bedfordonians. Yes. Excellent. excellent. I also just coined that phrase. It's probably the first and last time it will ever be said is right now. Ah. So hey, it's got a ring to it. It's so got a ring to it. Enjoy yourself. It was <laughs> just witness history. Excellent. An amazing fight. Uh, probably fight of the night so far. But, man, we got two great ones coming up. We have our co-main event with Chris Jacobs from Fall River versus Luciani Santos from Concord, New Hampshire. And then, of course, in our main event, Brendan Barry for the WBA NABA USA welterweight title. Ten-round fight. And uh, let's talk about that fight. Brandon Barry's career in many ways is kind of on the line here tonight because he has fought so hard to get to this place to have a title like this where he could potentially enter the rankings and be in line for a major fight after 22 professional victories. It's been incredible. Um, but Travis Castellion is standing in the way, and it's a real tough 
fight for Brandon Barry. It's a very equally matched 50-50 type of fight. Um, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. I mean, Brandon Barry is a favorite here at Boston Boxing Promotions. Fighter in many senses, even though he's from Maine. The biggest fighter in Maine right now. A ton of contingency came down from Maine to see him tonight. But he's in very, very tough. I think it's the fight of his life tonight. Yeah, Brandon's no stranger to tough fights. Um, and he knows what's on the line here. So I don't expect anything but just heart and grit from him tonight. Absolutely. But Travis, in a sense, knows what an upset could do for him here. He could he could go home to Florida with the WBA, NAB title, the NABA title, and, and, and get uh, you know on the way to a world ranking. And I don't I don't think anyone would come all the way from Florida for a title and not be here to to win. Yeah. Both men have had spotty performances in the past, but most of them have attributed to conditioning and the gym. They both said, oh, the fights I lost, I just wasn't in great shape. And that's another thing that makes this fight, in many senses, a 50-50 fight, because if we get a, if we get a Brandon Barry who's not 100%, Travis is going to win this fight. And if we get a Travis who's not 100%, Brandon's going to win this fight. And if we get a Brandon and a Travis that are both 100%, we've got a great fight. We've got a great fight. Well, let's talk about Chris Jacobs coming to the ring right now. He is, to me, one of the most exciting fighters in the New England area. Boston Boxing Promotions fighter. The, the first man to beat Harry Gigliotti, the Merrimack Valley champion. The first man to beat Brandon Higgins. Fast hands, very flashy fighter from Fall River. He was supposed to be in a co-main against an event tonight against Josh Ranieri. That was a highly anticipated local fight. Josh Ranieri from Haverhill, the same gym as Harry Gigliotti. That was a big, big ticket seller for the area. But Josh Ranieri was in a real and bad moped accident, to my knowledge, where he broke his entire your leg in three or four different places. Rounds in the junior middleweight division. Introducing first, boxing out of the blue corner to my left. Wearing red trunks with white trim. Coming to us from Concord, New Hampshire. Ladies and gentlemen, Lucine Santos. And his opponent standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right. Wearing red and white trunks and coming to us from Fall River, Massachusetts. A boxing boxing promotion's favorite, ladies and gentlemen, Chris Bontine Jacobs. Four rounds, junior medalists. Oh, like we were saying prior to uh, the announcement from Mr. Zimbor, um, this was supposed to be a really, really big fight that Chris Jacobs had tonight. The biggest fight of his career against the undefeated Josh Ranieri. Luckily, an opponent was found in time to replace him, but it doesn't have the excitement and magic that Ranieri Jacobs would have had. This place would have been, you know, uh, crawling through the walls just like the Harry Brandon fight. But we still get to see Chris in action tonight. Mad Dog, thanks for joining us tonight. You want to give us the uh, stats on these gentlemen? Absolutely. Chris Jacobs, like you said, the only guy to beat both Harry Gigliotti and Brigham Higgins, uh, Brendan Higgins, that is a big, big mark in his career. N nobody else has done that. And here we go. Jacob's wearing the white main trunks with red trim down the side. Santos is a pretty accomplished MMA fighter. He actually looks in really good shape. He's got a really nice physique. Moving a, a little unorthodox around the ring, but watch those hands of Jacobs. He's a, he's a natural athlete. He really puts his combinations together nice. The running, swinging uppercut by Santos here. Santos wearing the majority red trunks with white trim down the side. Chris, Chris is really good at switching stances. He's pretty much just as good left-handed as he is right-handed. So if things keep going like this, check to see if he switches stances, try to make an adjustment. Yeah. Looks like he slipped in a quick jab there. Seems like an old-fashioned one-two would hit the spot right now for Jacobs. Santo seems to be dropping that lead hand. He's sweeping the shots away like an MMA fighter. There we fighter. see him. Whoa. Switches to southpaw and catches him with a straight left hand. And we had a twirl up there. Wow, been able to stay on his feet is Whoa. Santos. And Our second 360. And to the back of the head says... He's, Santos clearly watching a lot of uh, gymnastics during this recent Olympics. Able to stay on his feet, though. Very impressive. Nice show of sportsmanship from both gentlemen. You can see he's an MMA fighter, Scott. See how those hands open up almost like instinctively protecting kicks that aren't coming. He's ready for the double leg takedown. Jacob's moving in, trying to cut off oh, the leg. Oh, that was a jab. A jab gets Santos down. He looks, he looks pretty dazed. Pops back up. That was just a beautiful straight jab. I think the fight, oh! They're waving off. Hey, really? 
and, and Santos is not even Santos. Protesting. Leo Gristel might, might see something. Let's take a look at the replay, see if we can find anything here. I don't like to see a fight end from a jab. I don't like to see a guy do a whole training camp for that outcome. Yeah, it was. It was a clean jab. Clean jab. I mean, yeah. it, it got him on the chin. Yeah. It got him square. But I don't know. I mean, yeah, it was, it was a legit knockdown, but not something to for the fight to be over because I, of he's that. up. He's looking at the ref. I mean, maybe the ref asked him a question that we didn't hear. And no I mean, one, no protest whatsoever. No one, Chris. He worked so hard for this. He he's probably a little let down that the fight yeah. was stopped too because he wanted to get get some rounds in. That's such a good point that you make. When he was getting ready for the toughest fight of his career, he's fighting Josh Ranieri, the co-main event. Literally, that's the type of fight around here. And that, that was going to be the main event oh, before. The main event. Before Brandon Berry had the uh, the okay. belt opportunity. So he was going to be a main event fighter fighting an undefeated local fighter. I mean, that's the type of thing you train for, you get up for, the excitement around it, and then two weeks out, you know, you lose that fight, and you're lucky to find a replacement, but and it's got to be a disappointment to stop a guy with a jab. That is no discredit to Chris Jacobs. He looks phenomenal. He just stopped a man with a jab. I think he's a very exciting fighter, but I want to see him in there with somebody. I think he's got the type of skills that can provide a really entertaining fight. He would have been able to show his skills if the Raineri fight had happened, but 100%. I mean, as John Lennon said, life is what happens to us while we're busy making other plans, and Raineri wanted a fight, and then the moped thing happened, and that's yeah. life. Scott, you're a beautiful, beautiful darling boy. A renaissance man. <laughs> Where, uh, for those on the chat, we are throwing in some Beatles insider comedy here. Well, I need to uh, pay homage to my father for that. John Lennon fan, he's the one that told me about that, and it was probably one of the best sayings I ever heard in my life. Well, Scott, I would like to invite you tonight to the uh, post-fight party at uh, Margaritas at the Holiday Inn, where after two drinks, I will be performing a new version of Happy Birthday, dedicated to Peter Zimbor in regards to the shows that he promoted, because he's the birthday boy. It was his birthday boy. This oh, so we got to give him birthday punches. Yes, yes. A, a big, let's get some of these gloves back on first. Now, come on, Mad Dog, a little love for Mr. Zimbor. Love the, the Peter, Zim man. Peter Zimbor's birthday, I believe it's Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, we go to him for the official announcement. Seconds of round number one. You winner via TKO, Chris Jacobs. All right, so there it is, Chris Jacobs, one minute, 44 seconds of the very first round. A TKO for him. Hey, listen, Chris Jacobs, I, I think he's a sensational fighter. I mean, he's a natural athlete. He runs his own gym out in Fall River. Uh, and he's a great guy, too. Very positive, very friendly guy. I want to see more from him. I think he's one of the better fighters in the area. I really hope he's back in September, and I hope he's in a good fight where he can prove what he's capable of. He's right. one to watch. And tonight he was fighting at 154. That's something else we should mention, gentlemen. He's naturally a 47. And he's a big 47, as you can see. I mean, he's a dangerous guy at 47. And it's the type of guy that can make some noise on the national level with a few more fights under his belt. Speaking of the national level, before we get there, tickets on sale now, boxinganh.com, for the Fall Brawl, September 24th, right here at the Castleton Event uh, and Conference Center in Windham, New Hampshire. Fights begin at 7 p.m. So absolutely get your tickets at BoxingNH.com. That'll be another good one, I'm sure. We might have some knuckleheads guys on that card as well. We, we hope to be back out. We love being here. Um, and my God, do you have to love that graphic? That's, That's a heck of a graphic. Overall. Kevin Walsh, Nick Molina. I personally, as a, a fan of this sport, I would love to see Kevin Walsh go against Nick Molina Man. in a lightweight clash. Mad Dog, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great fight. Great matchmaking there. Would, would be a hell of a fight. Sean Bay's on that card as well, among many others. Always a, a good card put on by Boston Boxing Promotions. The fight after that, the annual Thanksgiving Eve spectacular, yeah. right here at the Castleton as well. Yeah, and if you are a fan of boxing, you live in the New England area, Scott, you are, are you know, new to the Castleton. It's magical, huh? I mean, there's real energy here. It's a great place to see the fights. Yeah, it was my first time here a couple weeks ago, and I, I was shocked. I wasn't expecting it to be so nice. It's nice and peaceful outside. Yeah. There's, there's some ducks, some yeah. frogs it, leaping it's, around. It's by a river. And then you come in here, yeah. and people are trying to kill each other. It's, it's, and coming close. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's great. It's a wonderful place. It's a great scene. We hope to see you all on September 24th. But guys, it's time. It's the main Let's event. Let's talk about the national level. Brandon yeah. Berry is going for the WBA NABA US welterweight title against Travis 
Castellum from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I think this is a 50-50 fight, guys. Scott and I were talking about it earlier, Mad Dog. Brendan Barry has invested so much in his own career. He's been a war horse, just going at it, getting the wins, getting the wins, piling it on, waiting for an opportunity to get a ranking, waiting for the opportunity to get a title shot like this. And it's coming tonight in the form of Travis Castellum who, despite a few losses, has been in there with better competition than Brendan Barry, and that always makes for an interesting fight. Here comes Brendan Barry to the ring to John Cougar Mellencamp's small town. Brendan Barry comes from the West town West Forks, Maine? West Forks, Maine. If you can believe this, Scott, 30, 30 people live in the hometown that Brendan Barry is from. 30 human beings. Well, that's crazy, because I was told it was 29. I feel uh, like Oh, boy. <laughs> Call me Colonel Gray Sheridan, because I had to go down a bottle of water after yelling for Colonel, eight nights there. Colonel Gray Sheridan, I love it. I feel number 17 coming on, Chris. <laughs> Seven will die on the ride home. When Colonel <laughs> Gray Sheridan yeah. defends his honor. Oh, boy. Do you have a new Ferrari, Gray? <laughs> I was uh, downing a bottle of water in a duct tape Subaru, so I don't have a Ferrari. But uh, well, we were, we've been talking about this main event. Scott yes. and I are super excited. Mad Dog's excited. I mean, this is a 50-50 oh, kind of fight. What a banger! Both guys know what this means. Someone will emerge on the national level. That's not hyper old. That's the real deal. One of these guys is going to get a title, well not a title fight, but a major opportunity yes. against a ranked fighter, whoever wins here tonight. They know how much it means. They're both pumped up for it. We got men. the John Cougar Mellon camp going. Yeah, we we're talking about West Forks, Maine, Brandon's hometown. 30 people. You have to come out to Small yes. Town by John Cougar Mellon camp. Off the classic Scarecrow. Of Speaking of John Cougar Mellon camp, <laughs> Scarecrow is a completely underrated record. Maybe the born in the USA of the Midwest. But I digress. Hot take Chris Brandon J. Brandon Barry is here. <laughs> Javit Castleton's here and Peter's And Pete Zimbo is here with the introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for our main events of the evening. Ten rounds of boxing for the WBA and NBA United States Welterweight Championship. Introducing first boxing out of the blue corner to my left. He's wearing black trunks with green and yellow trim. His record, an impressive one. 16 wins against just four defeats, one draw, 12 big wins by way of knockout. He comes to us from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, Travis Catherine. And his opponent standing directly across the ring, fighting out of the red corner to my right, wearing black trunks with gold trim. His record, just as impressive. 22 wins, five defeats, two draws, 15 big wins coming by way of now. He comes to us from West Fork, Spain. Ladies and gentlemen, Brandon O'Bannon Barry. Ten round NBA US welterweight title. Well. And that will hype you up. Peter Zimmer on fire tonight. On I, I think that we know who had the most tickets sold tonight. Yeah. And I'll tell you one more thing. There's more than 30 people here, so clearly he's uh, more famous than his hometown. Absolutely. No doubt about it. Guys, I'm excited for this one. This is the main event of night Ten rounds. of the Great American Boxing Bash. Here we go. This is going to be an interesting fight, guys. We've seen both of these guys uh, have good performances, and we've seen sometimes them struggle in the ring. So let's see what versions we're going to get of both fighters. No doubt. This first round is going to be really interesting to see who comes out and tries to seize the deck. Yep. I think you told me, uh, uh, Chris, Ka Travis Castellan's very motivated. Yes. Yeah, I uh, was uh, had the pleasure of driving over to the weigh-in the other day, and uh, he is in shape for this one. And he said that when he loses, he's not in shape. And, and Brandon Barry has the exact same thing. It's almost like we're looking at the same type of fighter. And you already can see right away Castellan coming at him, jabbing. Brandon Barry's style, if you're not familiar with it, is very methodical. He tends to start very slow, very slow pace. He tries to slow you down and then go to work. Castleton just kind of testing out the jab. Moving really nice. Early here, Castellan's winning the battle of the front feet with the southpaw and orthodox matchup. Absolutely. 
By the way, one interesting viewer, uh, Laquan Lewis, definitely would love to fight Brandon Barry. He said that after his last fight, actually. Oh, he he said, I want the cannon. Fight? Huh. Yeah, so. That'd be a great fight. I think that'd be a really fun fight between two guys who have truly been staples on the Boston Boxing Promotion circuit. But I think Brandon Barry, if he wins this title, he, wa he wants a national fight. Oh, he, will, he would want he it. If he, if he wins, yeah. then he wants to get on TV. He wants a 10-round, 12-round fight yeah. against the big name. And But this is the guy he's got to get through to get there. 100%. And let me tell you, Travis Castellan's having a good start. He's putting on a boxing display so far, quite frankly. But very, very relaxed. Keep in mind, it's a 10-round fight. Brandon Barry's never gone sure. 10 rounds before. So in many ways, he may be taking these first rounds. Oh, nice body. Wow. That was a good shot by Barry to the body. Yeah, Barry working. Nice overhand left from Barry. And that's Barry's style. Yes. He slowly takes his time, almost lulls you into thinking there's no action coming, and then, and then he, he goes to work. And then, he, then he gets that little moment in. 100%. Brendan Barry often referred to as the Eeyore of professional boxing. <laughs> Always bummed out, very hard to make he, smile. He, it's true, he, he, he yeah. seems like he, I think he is a happy guy, he's a family man, a yeah. uh, great family. Uh, and a wonderful wife too. Yes. Super supportive. Just slowly taking his time, he's starting to walk Castellone down. Because Castellone had so much success in the opening, right. or the opening half of the round, just moving and popping the jab. Feels like a very evenly matched fight so far. Absolutely. But like we said, it looks like they both came 100%. Yeah. Oh yeah, Travis Castellone uh, is in great shape, and he's. I think he. he I think he oh. believes in himself that he can be competitive. And right there, nice one-two combination. Yeah. Let me tell you, he's winning this round for yes. me, Chris J. And, and, and he grabbed it in the last couple seconds. Brandon yeah. had a moment, but. Mm. Yeah, this reminds me of the Augustin Cicero fight where Augustin won that first round and had a really hot start. And then Brandon did uh, make some adjustments in that fight and won it the rest of the way. So we'll have to see. Uh, you know, he's gonna have to he's gonna have to throw more and uh, make some adjustments in there, Chris, mm. if he's gonna win this fight. No, absolutely, absolutely. But the interesting round, a little bit of a feel out. I think we see what two styles we're looking at, and it's basically which one's gonna have more success as we progress. Absolutely. Exciting to have a title fight here, though, at the Castleton. I think it's a great thing. Yeah, we had a WBC, US NBC title fight last Thanksgiving Eve. Of course, Cassius Cheney brought the house down the heavyweight with a big knockout. Big knockout. You actually called that fight on a I, cell phone, I, right? <laughs> that was, I believe it was an illegal stream. <laughs> yeah, well, Peter gave me the, the okay. green light, but it was. I, I was watching I, it. Uh, yes. Uh, that's that's but, when your commentating gig was born. Yeah, yeah, I really was. Yeah. I was starting to do those uh, quote-unquote bootleg streams yeah. from my phone yeah. for just entertaining friends, and yeah. then Peter said, hey, we can do these live. That's how so. it started for him, Scott. He was all hopped up on Red Bull in the cheap seats, just waving uh, his phone around. You know, Colonel, oh. Colonel Gray got his, uh, that's how he got started. <laughs> that's why rules are meant to be broken. <laughs> <laughs> all right, round number two of ten, guys. Brandon Barry, Travis Castellone. If you're just joining us, Brandon Barry in the black with the stars, and Travis Castellone is in the black with the green trim. So this is your fault. <laughs> <laughs> the production team goes, so this is your fault. Yes, this is why we have live streams now. I, I, I bully Peter into it. Because they, they used to be, before before they were uh, put on, uh, well, after the event on the, on the YouTube channel. Castleton tying up, though, in, which is an interesting thing out of the gate. I mean, Barry hasn't really put any hard power power on him, and he's already tying up. Yep. So it's interesting. I think he's... He's figured out that Barry's best chance is on the inside, so he's probably going to try to play an outside fight uh -huh. and clinch when he can. Yeah. He's looking good so far. Nice. Nice floor. Oh. Nice. That's the best floor for Brendan Barry so far. Oh. He the castle on the chin. Both of these guys are going for it. Castleton answered back, though. I think both men were staggered for a second. Castleton hitting the wall. He's putting his head down. Jackie Morrell needs to jump in there to make it clear what was going on there because that's just... Barry, Barry, he wasn't told to stop fighting. Yeah. It seemed as if Barry rocked Castellon, and Castellon answered right back and rocked Absolutely. Barry. Absolutely, and, and if you're the referee, you got to take take charge. Oh, oh, big shot there by Barry upstairs. Both of these guys really gunning for it this round. I don't know if this is going to go 10 at this pace. Yeah, not at this pace, no. I think Brandon Barry is definitely tasting Castellone's power, though, and yeah. he's still coming forward. I also think Barry knows that that hook can land as well, Scott, and that's what he's looking for now. Yeah, you can, you can see the experience in Barry. You know, this guy, he's had almost 30 professional fights, and you can tell by how calm he stays. Very yes. calm. And Castellone as well. 
Just a great matchup. They don't call him Mr. Brightside for nothing, Greg. <laughs> oh, another, another great, great shot, run. yeah. This has been a very, very entertaining. Again, oh, Brennan oh, Berry oh. continues to duck down and he's, yeah. he's falling in between Castellone's legs. Another clinch there, it's getting a little bit sloppy. Barry really changing the game plan a bit this round and having success. I, I see a lot more effective aggression yeah. this round, but let me tell you, Travis Castellone is still fighting like a man who believes Absolutely. he can win. Barry really trying to utilize that hook. <laughs> and Castellone from that shot. Oh, Again, nice great, a lot of fans middle. here to see Brandon Berry. Nice variety of punches from Castellano. Good uppercut nice. there. Oh, and you body body shot. Castellano on the ropes. Berry answers right back. Best flurry so far we've seen for Brandon Berry in this fight. Absolutely. This is definitely his round. Nice shot from Castellano. Yeah, but Castellano here putting his punches together. I think those Brandon moments won in the round. Absolutely. Scott, you know, I'm really impressed just overall with the card tonight. Uh, a lot of the fighters seem to just understand how important strategy is. Every time they get hit with a good couple of punches, they've all just come right back. And yeah. that's what we saw in this round. Barry would get rocked a little bit, and he'd come right back and rock Castellano. And then Trying to win that exchange is so important. You know? I think that I think that this fight is a uh, card has exceeded my expectations. Yes. It's uh, we've seen some real great it's, ones tonight, especially with the cancellations that we had. Greg, we talked yes. about losing the Chris Jacobs Josh Mary fight. That was oh, devastating. Yep, yep. Yep. Where everyone was in the air and was bummed about that. That was a showdown. The, Name some of the other gentlemen uh, who were on this card. We were supposed to have um, uh, a heavyweight co main with uh, James Torney, was supposed to be on this show. Which people are really excited about, who's been in Wilder's yeah. camp. And uh, that yeah. fell off, that fell apart as well. Um, so it's tough, man. When you lose a co main and you lose your main event on the club level, they, that can be a death blow. Yeah. I've seen cards get canceled yeah. from that. But, but Pete Zimbor is a magician. Yeah. If that's one <laughs> thing we can call yeah. him, a yeah. magician. Credit to Pete and, of course, Nick DeSalvo, who run Boston Boxing Promotions. Two great gentlemen. I see a they lot. They a lot to make this card happen tonight. I see a lot of ice, by the way, in that corner yeah. uh, of Castellon. And, yeah. uh, and this place is rocking. This place is yes. absolutely rocking. Again, we're another packed house. Yeah, a lot of people. Uh, have stayed from start to finish. It was a big crowd in the beginning, a big crowd at the end. Yeah. You gotta love it, man. You this is what it. it's all about, New England. Castleton's having success going right down the middle with yeah. the straight shots, and Brandon's having success with the uh, the hooks. Brandon's got some really his pressure is very interesting. You don't, you're not aware of the fact that he's doing it, and the next thing you know, you're on the ropes. Absolutely, a lot of no, no, a lot of. Uh, he's telling me the clinches have been kind of rough. Uh, Beautiful nice. body shot by Barry. But then Castleton answers back. Answers right back. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody's will bro uh, been broken so far, for sure. Pretty important round in my eyes. I mean, someone's going to go up, whoever takes it. Yeah, game. exactly. Who's going to go up 2-1 here? Who's oh. going to get the momentum? But I'll tell you, Travis Castle having some moments right now. He's got Brandon Barry locked Barry. on the ropes. It's not where Barry needs to be. No. And if he is, he needs to answer back. Looks like he's talking to the referee, Jackie Ramel. Saying he's getting headbutted. And, uh, and he's catching a lot of shots. Castellone right now doing some excellent work while Barry's on the ropes right in front of us. Barry complaining, I think, about headbutts there while he was catching shots. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can't be talking to the referee no. in that moment. You just got to stay focused. Oh. But yeah, Travis Castellone, I think, is starting to realize that, uh, I, hey, I can hang in right now. Yeah, little redness around the right eye of Barry. Maybe that's what he was complaining about. Could have been from the head. But looks, looks like momentum's, uh, Castleton, uh, Castellone has taken the momentum a little bit here. Yeah. By far his round, no doubt. So far. Barry seems slightly frustrated right now. His experience should overcome that, though. He's got to watch that leaning down with the head, though. Yeah. I don't know if he's getting pushed down from It's hard to tell. Castellon. I think it's a little of both. He's putting his head a little too low, and he's Castellon. He's fighting the shorter man's fight, yeah. and this is where Brandon has to go to work if he wants this fight. I think right now this is a Travis round. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
But, oh, 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 but, but there's Brandon Berry. Must have heard me yeah. putting putting his punches together. Wow. I, I like how he throws combinations. When he chooses to fight, he throws a couple shots at you. This is but just a dog not, fight. It's not enough in my opinion right now. I'll tell you, Brandon Berry is trying his best to steal this round yeah, right now. That was a big, another nice hook there. This could come down to conditioning, gentlemen. I agree. No. I like Castellan bobbing and weaving there and throwing two shots over the top. Hits him with the jab, hits him over the left hand. Brandon Berry smiles, and I think he knows uh, what, Castellan what, took what, that what's round. What's Berry complaining about? I, I can't quite tell. Yeah, because I, I haven't really seen, from my vantage point, Chris and Scott, I haven't seen a lot of head clashes. Yeah, the, the referees. And the, and the corner the not happy either. But again, this is a problem. You got to stay focused on the fight. You can't be yelling at the referee. Yeah, I, I haven't really seen any unnecessary uh, headbutting. I, I mean, the heads have clashed a little bit, but I believe, you know, Castellon is just, he's just trying to put pressure when he gets a chance. He had Barry up against the ropes, and he, and he tried to take advantage of the situation, and that's boxing. Sometimes the head comes into play a little bit, and not on purpose always. Absolutely. So we're coming into uh, round number four of ten tonight. Uh, don't see many ten-rounders in the uh, box the Boston Boxing Promotions uh, show. So it's, 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 fun a to see. it's a treat. It was yeah. great to see Harry and, and Brandon do the eight rounds. I mean, those extra rounds yep. really is where guys have to dig and kind of prove where they're at in the process. Yeah. The beautiful Certainly. thing about the fights with this many rounds is it really doesn't matter what happens in the first four rounds because it, <laughs> it could be a completely yeah. different fight by round eight, sure. round nine. Certainly. You never know. One guy could be dominating in the first four and then end up losing. Jackie Morrell not liking the ice in the corner. Battle, battle of the ice in the corner. Jackie Morrell, by the way, a former professional fighter. Yeah. What's the claim to fame, Gray? Uh, I fought Marlon Starling twice, I believe. Yeah. Talk about a New England legend, Marlon Starling. Yes, sir. Oh, nice. Good start here, Brandon. He Brandon. Uh, Wait, oh, sneaky little uppercut. Oh, oh, slapping right hand. I, I do see him starting to pull Brandon's head down a little bit. Yeah. I think when you're the large, well, the the bigger guy, that tends to happen. Nice lead right hand from Barry. Good shots there by Castellum. He Castellum does a good job of trying to steal the moment. When Barry lands a couple shots, he's really quick at trying to get a couple shots in himself. And the reason for that is because. Berry should be walking in just like he is, but behind the jab. He's yeah. given Castellan yeah. too much time to think about what he's going to do. I don't even think he's thrown five jabs so far. No. You know, he just keeps walking in. You know? when, when jab you're, in, jab in. When you're walking a guy down, you don't necessarily have to land the jab. You just have to throw something yeah. to give them something to think about. In a sense, you're using it as a stick. You're prodding them into the place that you want. Yeah, you want to get inside. Nice body, nice body shot, shot there by Barry. But it's given Castellan too much time to yeah. think about his yeah. way out. Again, referencing Harry Brandon night one of the bash, we saw that a lot in the early rounds with Brandon Higgins. But as the mover and the jabber slows down. For sure. I'll tell you, I think this is another round right now for Castellon yes. at the moment. I think Barry needs to pick it up because he's letting Castellon move around the ring, pick his shots. He's, gotta have, he's not going to win rounds with, that, with this kind of pace. This is what, this is what, this is what Barry, Barry needs to do, is get Castellan trapped in the corner. That was a gorgeous body that shot. Was that was a beautiful was. body shot. I really like Definitely seeing. took something out of Castellan. Yep. Jeez. That's a scary place to be when your back is completely oh. turned to the other fight. Yeah. I mean. yeah you're, you're just defenseless. Yeah. Once again, guys, a really uh, energetic crowd here. See a lot of people in the standing only are still here. They're here to see a battle. They want to yeah. see an NABA champion. And, and they're, getting, they're getting a main event fight right now. They are. Yeah. Nice little offer cut from Barry. And I think Brandon's really doing a nice job trying to get this round back. He's shaking his head. He knows. He's enjoying this. Yeah. You know what's cool about Brandon Barry? He's a boxing fan. I know that's a weird thing to say, but a lot of fighters tend to not be a fan of the sport. Right. Brandon goes to fights. He travels to fights. He understands the sport. Loves he's, the culture. He loves it. He's got a deep love for it. Man, I mean, and, and there's Castellon hearing that warning bell, and I think he's like, hey, I'm going to try and steal this in the last 10 seconds. That is a close round, in my opinion. I, I agree. Mean, I could see this being probably, I, I had it as a 2-2 fight right now. 
personally. I don't know. You guys have it? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I, I think uh, Barry pulled that round out just just very slightly, but I think that, that was a Barry round. And what's interesting about our cards, I think we both agree, we're going back and forth. There's a Castellone round, a Barry round, a Castellone round, and a Barry round. I see you know? I see Chris's notes here as he's trying to uh, write down his 10-9 rounds. Yeah. Uh, yes. So we're keeping track here. Hey, in the chat, well, let us you know. You can understand my penmanship, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't know what language these, these look like. Some uh, holographics or whatever you call those things, poly whatever. <laughs> Hiero hieroglyphics. hieroglyphics, yeah. So hieroglyphics. I can Someone, say the word, but I can't spell I see, I see a couple tutus in the chat as well. Oh. Crowd's getting a little rowdy over yeah. there. Interesting. And I see, I you see. You know what's weird about that? It looks like Brendan Berry fans have actually bonded with the Nick Castellone fans, and they're cheering with each other. Hey, Greg, <laughs> that's what's special about that's, Boston Boxing that's, Promotions. That's what I say, guys. It's about friendship. It's, you know, at the, at the end of the day, yes, this is a very violent sport, but at the end of the day, there's respect. And, yeah. the, and, and each of these fighters, uh, you know, they, a lot of them have their fans, and they show each other respect. Another big round, guys. We have this, round all, five. We have this all even. We're, half, we're getting close to halfway through this fight now. I believe Brandon Berry has been past the fourth round 11 times in his career. Okay. So he's a guy that, no, he, he's, uh, Brandon likes to go, he, he's not he's not afraid to go late in the fight. And he even said that, hey, I need to be in eight to 10 round fights. Yeah. I want opportunities, Chris. He's never been a power puncher. No. You know, that's not what Brandon Berry is. He's a workmanlike, methodical fighter. He does everything good, you know, and yeah. he's put together a lot of wins with that, with that demeanor and that style. Yes, sir. Very, uh, like I said, he, he's very workmanlike, I think is the word you used to describe Brandon Berry in the ring. But Travis Castellone, man, doesn't stop jabbing, not, hasn't stopped moving. I see, uh, I haven't seen too much, uh, you know, fatigue on his part. And that, this is a guy that's definitely been stopped in his last few fights, but I think he's uh, one really gets, believing in himself here. One gets the feeling this could get you. Oh, because that, that's a warning. Jackie Morrell telling him to keep it up. Uh, 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 point deduction could be pivotal in a fight like this. Absolutely. And this is where he's got to work, Scott. Brandon keeps walking him down. He's cutting the ring off good, but I'd just like to see that jab a little more. Really nice movement here from Castellon. Yeah. Still sticking with that jab. And you can move in this ring. It's massive. This is a very, very large feet. ring. And most fighters, in some cases, will have several fights before they get in a ring of this size. And it's a new experience for him. You get tired. You get yeah. tired moving around there. The question's going to be on these scorecards. As I mean, Brandon Berry is coming forward. Is that uh, effective aggression? Yeah. Or is Castellone, who's you know moving, jabbing, and he's having another good round here? Uh, what, do, what do you like more? It's a bit of a stylistic. I just think Castellone is a little busier. He right? is. I, think I, I, like, I think Castellone is winning this round right now. It's the volume. I love what Barry does when he does it. But yeah, but, but Castellone is the one that's constantly moving his hands. He's moving in. He's moving out. Man, this is uh, this could get really, really ugly in terms of the clinching. Yeah. I think both fighters are realizing they're not even halfway done yet. Brandon, and uh, yeah, Brandon Berry's got to get off those ropes because right now Castellan is burying him with uppercuts to the body. Yeah, and this is a this is a Castellan round for sure. And he's doing a good job of stealing the rounds too. He always yeah. gives us a little flurry right at that 10 second. He time. does. Very self-aware fighter, I noticed. And he's yeah. pumped up. He is loving it. He is fired up. He thinks he's winning this fight. I, and I, I agree. Think I, I, think I, think that, I think Castellone is winning this fight right now, yeah. in my opinion. So we're through five rounds. Uh, we still have five more to go. Woo. And that Castellone corner is fired up. I yeah. think he really believes that he can pull this off. Again, he is the, he's the one coming on the road from Florida. And Brandon Barry has a lot of supporters here in New England from yeah. Maine. So... It's not easy when you're fighting on the road like this, Chris. Yeah, and we're right by uh, Castellone's corner, but uh, interesting note, little blood coming out of the nose. Not that that means much. You're getting punched in the nose. That's natural. But those very shots are having an effect. There's no doubt about it. And it, and it can make it a little harder to breathe where in a fight like this where it might come down to late round stamina, that could affect them a little bit. Yeah, the nose isn't going to get any better over the course of the next five rounds. <laughs> Probably not. But as of right now, Castellone looks fine. Yeah. He looks, no, no he looks fine, yeah. ready to go. He's, he's looking good right now. 
All right, guys, we are at round number six coming up of 10. We want to thank everybody who's joining us tonight. Absolutely. On the Boston Boxing Promotions YouTube page. Absolute pleasure to be here with real boxing fans online and in yes. person. Yes. If you're watching this, you really enjoy club fighting, you love boxing, we really appreciate having you with us tonight. Yeah. And we'll be back September 24th. Right. Write it down on your calendars. And we will be back as well. Let's, I, can, I think we could throw this out there. Thanksgiving Eve. Keep that date open. Oh, yeah. That's a classic Boston At, Boxing Promotions event. Every year. Yeah. Back to the action here, Gray. Um, I think Barry he has a little more fire under him in this round. I think his coach told him that you lost that round. Yep. Let's go. You can't let this guy uh, jab and move around and while you're leading with your, you know, trying to go forward and getting uh, hit with lead lefts and lead rights. It's not going to work out for you. Yeah, Brandon really has to try to do something to start taking this second part of the fight for, for himself. He's I'm letting Castellan get away with too much right now. Yeah, yeah Castellan's having the better of these exchanges right now. And you can see Castellan trades, and then he gets, he moves in, he moves out. He's doing a very nice job. Crowd is fired up for Brandon. They're trying to give him that extra mojo. They're trying. I, mean, I, I really like seeing how Castellan is using ring movement right now. He's a very elusive target. You can tell he's still got a lot of energy in those legs, Chris. Man, Brandon's just got to start picking up the volume on the shots. I just think he's getting outworked. I don't think he's getting outboxed. I just think he's getting outworked. And, and jab, jabbing in, Scott. Where's the jab? Please, jab yeah. in, jab in. He's, like I said, he's yeah. just giving him too much time to think about what he's going to do okay. rather than occupying and putting him on the defense. Yeah. Right here, Brandon needs to work. He needs to take this round. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an imperative round. Yeah, this is going to be a turning point in the fight right now, and I don't know if necessarily he's doing enough here. I just don't. I see a lot of energy in those legs of Travis Castellon, man. Yeah. He's doing a great job. Nice uppercut there by Castellon, and nice one-two over the top, getting through getting through Barry's guard a little bit. And, 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 and again, Barry waits. He, 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 yeah, he can't be waiting. He can't be just pacing forward ahead and trying to get a body it. Shot. Nice body shot again. Yeah, Brandon's doing good work when he's working, but he just needs to throw two, three, four punch combinations, not just one punch. That's the best moment right now for Brandon Berry in this fight. <laughs> Man, Nick Castellan, he knows how to tie you up. That, he that does. That looks like a hangman's carry there. He does. But Nick is, is, is Travis is just doing a tremendous job of uh, yeah. using that ring. Barry's starting to pick it up a little bit here. He knows he has to. Again, I I, I, I think Castellan took this round. I really do, guys. Yeah. Just That's just my opinion. I, uh, don't, I don't think there's any doubt about it, Craig. Either. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, that was a crucial 10-second uh, ending of a round right there, and, yeah. and I think Barry kind of gave it away. Yeah, Barry, I think Barry's in a pretty big hole. I mean, I think it's entirely possible yeah, he, that we're looking at a 4-2 kind of fight. Yeah. yeah, he could be behind two rounds easily right now. And I, I, could, yeah. you, could you blame a judge if a judge had it 5-1? I want to no. see, if you're in the chat and you're hearing this, I want to see your scores. I have it four rounds to two right now for Travis Castellone. Yeah, four rounds to two as well. Chris, yep, Scott, I have you the same agree? Way. All right. I think right now we're, we're watching Barry kind of beat himself a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And as well as Castellone's taking, he's taking the initiative, but he's Barry's he's, allowing him to. Yes, yeah. There's opportunity for Barry. It's not like he's getting overwhelmed or overpowered, but he's, he's not fighting the right game plan yeah right now. exactly so we'll get, we're gonna be heading into round number seven still got uh, four more rounds to go my my math is correct <laughs> uh, but thanks again guys again boss of boxing promotions doing this live and free on YouTube we yeah. are so grateful to have you joining us everybody in, in on Twitter land that's uh, giving us love thank you we appreciate it nice body shot to open up from Barry it is time He's, for him to go to work. If you yeah, he, he really has to take advantage of those moments. I see scorecards for Brandon. I see scorecards for Travis. So, I, you know, hey, this is what boxing is. It's all about perception. So this will be fascinating, I think, if we get to the yeah. scorecards. Yeah, that's the thing about boxing is it's very, it's very subjective. It, yes. There's no one way to score a yeah. fight. This is a good fight. I mean, styles make fights, and I think we do have a really good fight. 
I like this comment from Patrick Connor. He says, 4-2 Castellon sounds right. If Teddy Atlas were here, he'd say Barry's doing the hard part, <laughs> moving his head, but not doing the fun part, yeah. bunching opportunities but, but, right. he creates. He's putting the water in the basement. Yeah, he's going to say. <laughs> the water. Did, did you ever hear um, the tremendous writer, uh, William Detloff, from uh, Yeah, I'm inside. familiar Just, with William. And it, a brilliant, brilliant writer, and I think a very funny guy. But his impersonation of Teddy Atlas oh, is, I'm sure it's is amazing. second to none. I want to say while we were talking there, uh, Travis Castle, nice, nice couple jabs there in that little sequence. He landed, a, he, he timed a really good straight left hand on Barry too, and Barry walked into it because he's not, in the in the name of Teddy Atlas, he's not putting any bugs on the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> the Atlas quotes are flying tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Watch out. Yeah, you, you may get hit with one. You guys started it. <laughs> <laughs> nice, 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 nice jab. Nice, nice jab there by Brandon. If he did more of that, it would be a completely different fight. 100%. But Castellon is taking advantage of what he has in front of him, and he's looking really good doing it. Like I said at the top, he didn't come here to lose. No, he no, did, he not. did not. He, he, came, he came here. We always felt it was a 50-50 fight. I think there's some people yes. that would say Barry is a favorite. We felt like it was 50-50, and I think he was aware of that. I think yep. he was well aware that he had a chance in this fight, and he's putting on the fight of his life. Again, one of oh, these yeah. gentlemen is going to win this. Brilliant, get brilliant, a brilliant effort here by Travis Castellon. Nice body shot. Nice shot over the top. Nice one-two there by Castellon. He's getting Braden and Barry right now to follow him. It's like a dance, and Castellon is the one doing the leading right now. And, and appropriately tying up. It's clearly frustrating Barry, but that's that's in Castellon's best interest. Yeah. Again, I can see the frustration right now yeah. on Brandon Barry's face, and again, I think I think he's got to be less annoyed about the holding and uh, more focused on trying to catch this guy. Yeah. Yeah, this is where right now you got Castellon on the ropes, Chris. This is where Brandon Barry needs yeah. him. And then he completely gets flipped. Warning bell here. Again, here, here, Castle. Oh, that was a really good uppercut. That buckled Brandon Barry. Yeah, and again, Castle that was the best punch of the fight right steals now. Steals the last 10 seconds of the fight. Now, I don't want to say steals because he was winning the round, but. We're going to go to our instant replay here, guys. I want you to see this uppercut here. It's coming. You see Brandon Barry fighting, uh, get him on the ropes here. All right. There's that oh. uppercut. That stung him. That stung him. That was that, in my opinion, that's the most impactful punch of the fight. Yeah, I, I think right now, uh, Brandon Barry's in a real big hold, right? Yeah, I agree. I have it 5-2 right now for Castellon. Yeah. He either needs a clean sweep and some love from the judges, or yes. he needs a stoppage. The fans are rocking. You got a, uh, oh. there's a nasal swab in the ring. Nasal swab in the ring. I don't know if the we'll, referee does not see it quite yet. And it's time for Barry to go to work. Hey, get the nasal swab out of the ring, ladies. Swab gentlemen. is out of the ring. Swab is out of the ring. All right, guys, let's get back to the action here. Eighth round. And a very competitive fight. And I'll tell you right now, Travis Castellon definitely buckled Brandon Barry's legs yeah, with that uppercut. Here's Barry. He's at coming. The end of the, at Barry the end of the knows seven. he needs this. He's yeah. coming really hard in this round. Oh, nice little two right down the middle. Start a little nose, a little blood coming out of the nose. Of Absolutely. So. Oh, nice shot from Barry. Nice shots. Barry can't smother himself, though, Scott. I think that's what's happening. He's, he's getting on the inside. He's doing all the work to get in there, but then he's getting a little too close, and he's allowing Castellan to, to clinch him by getting too close. I see 5-2. I see another 5-2 in the chat. Nice body shot. So they have similar cards as us. Yeah, I mean, again, I think Brandon did try to come out more aggressive this round, but again, I, I just don't see, I don't see enough. I don't see enough. I see a guy who's frustrated. I see a guy that's clinching, but I see the better body of work from Castellon. But again, this is where Brandon Berry does do good work. He's got him on the ropes. 
Sloan gets that distance, walks away. I saw a little, a little bit of a rabbit punch there by Brandon Barry. I think that's some frustration really starting to kick in. I think he's very frustrated in this fight. I think he yeah. thinks he's getting held way too much. I agree. And, and, and he is. Yeah. Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of holding, but again, yeah. it's part of the game, Chris. Yeah. And I also think Barry, as this fight goes on, I'm just seeing him sub smother himself. He's just in range to go to work, yep. and he's waiting a split second, and then it's and then it's too late. Get our, our judges tonight, Martha Tremblay, John Mathis, Eddie Scunzio. Those are three names that we probably will need to take a look at. As Chris Jacobs walks by, a big winner tonight earlier. Yep, very excited to see what the future holds for Mr. Jacobs. Yes, got a quick, quick, quick work in, so I'm sure he'll be back. Uh, Maybe, maybe he, hey, he might be on the 24th card. You never know. You never know what's going to happen to Boston Boxing Promotions Ring. Anyway, we are uh, midway through the eighth round here. I think, I think again, I think Castellon doing the good work. I mean, Barry has to do something to get this yeah. momentum back. It's, it's got to happen. Something just like that, but. Yeah, oh, another uppercut but, there by Castellon. Castellon always answers back. Whenever Brandon has a moment, he, it's like Castleton won't let him have it. He flurries so well at the 10 second mark. And that's another Travis hey. Castellon round. 6 2 in my book. We are uh, coming to the ninth round of this 10 round fight. I think we're looking at a 6 2 or a 5. I see a lot of frustration yeah. in that Brandon Berry corner right now. Let's take a look. At we're, the gonna last we're gonna take a look at the last 30 seconds here of this round. What do you tell me? What you see, Chris? I see Castleton trying to steal the round, just letting the hands go, letting them go, keeping them right down the middle. Nice little hitman movement from Barry, but we didn't see any shots from Barry. He no. basically just took an assault for 10 seconds. Can't be a stationary target, no. Scott. Can't you? He, you know, and I know he knows that. So I'm, you got to just wonder. He has enough experience to to know what to do in this moment. Yeah, I mean, he's got to let the hands go. And I think he wants to, but it's just the hands aren't moving right now. And I think I can see in this crowd right now, I think a lot of people know that this fight's yeah. getting away from Brandon. I and see the body language. You spoke about this a little earlier in that Brandon Barry has had great nights where he's looked like a world-class fighter. And he's had nights where he's looked very subpar, for yes. lack of a better word. He's sure. an off-on kind of guy. And I think right now we're looking at more of an off night from Brandon than an on night. I see a, a user life on a budget. I mean, he, true. This the Castellone Southpaw style. I mean, this is it's it's definitely frustrating Brandon right now. So I got a lot of guys don't like fighting Southpaws. <laughs> All right, so round nine of ten here. Castellone once again move, moving. He's elusive. He's throwing the jab. I think Barry has to know he needs a knockdown. Yeah. At this point. Oh, Castellone hitting him with uppercuts, loading. body shots. He's really the one trying to. He's looking like he's trying to close the show. Close the show, yeah. He's literally laying it on him here in round nine. Thanks to everybody again watching the stream here, Boss of Boxing Promotions. Our final bout of the evening. It's a 10 round belt, uh, NABA Welterweight Championship. Again, Brandon's got to do something here because yeah. if he's just going to stand there and let Castellon jab him, he's not going to win rounds. It's not going to happen. Yeah, this this seems like a moment where Barry is fight, fighting himself more than anything right now. Yeah. You can yes. tell he wants to do it. But he just can't let, it, can't let the hands go right yeah. now for he's whatever reason. Letting him go. Guys, I don't even think he's throwing five punches this round. No, it's been all jabs and body work from Travis Castellon. He's got to be happy with and, this effort. And this is a round, oh, this is a nice little shot from Barry. He's been sneaking in the two, a short little two, Scott. He's been uh, occasionally timing that on, on Castellon. Yeah, he, when he throws, he, he's landing really good. He's yeah. throwing good short punches like we see right here, but oh. he's letting Castellon steal the play every time almost. Castellon right now. now beating him up on the ropes. Brandon following. Yeah. Castellon doing a great job of getting out of there. And he's got to let him go here. That, that's there we go. That's the that's the moment Brandon Berry needs with a, a stationary Travis Castellan on the ropes. But those oh. moments, Chris, few and far between. 
Brandon Berry not happy about that. Oh! oh, 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 oh I don't know about that. Castellone deducted a point in round nine for a push by that was weird. He didn't Jackie Morell. He didn't call the fight back on. He the fight back on. Looked like Castellone just walked over and started punching him. I don't, yeah. ag I don't agree with that point deduction. I think that's you know, a very but if friendly. Barry just would have grabbed one or two of these rounds, maybe that point deduction we'd be looking at an even fight, but I don't know if it's enough to get him back in this. Well, and I'll tell you what, if this round keeps going the way it's going, it's going to be a 9-9 round. That won't really be an advantage yeah. for Yeah, Barry. exactly. I, 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 to, to your point, uh, to your point, Scott, I don't think that Brandon Barry won this round 10-8. So, so we're looking at a 9-9? I'm looking at a 9-9 yeah. here. I would have it uh, yeah. another round for Castellone. It's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit. The Barry fans getting a little uh, annoyed, uh, disappointed with what they're seeing, and I think that's resulting in some verbal hostility. Yes. Um, I think it's seven to Castellone right now with the with a one point deduction. You no, know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna throw out, I'm gonna throw out a six three. A three, a six, a three. A six three. Scott, maybe early on, Barry. I'm, I'm gonna have to go with that. Okay, six, six, three, six, three, seven, two. But set, I don't think you can give Barry more than three. I don't uh, think yeah, there's exactly. anybody can give him four. By the way, guys, one more time. Fall Brawl comes to the Castleton this September, uh, September 24th on a Friday night. Castleton Banquet, uh, Conference, Banquet and Conference Center, Winham, New Hampshire. Tickets on sale now. BoxingNH.com. You like what you see. You want to come see it live in New Hampshire. And stay on top of the Instagram of Boston Box yes. Promotions, on the Twitter, on all Facebook. The, all the additions, all the fights that are coming. Yes. We'll keep you posted on everything. We're expecting another big Big sellout on the 24th for Fall Brawl. Yes, sir. All right. Here we go. Tenth and final round. Both guys touch, touch gloves out of respect, and here we go. I think Brandon Barry needs a knockout. Yes, he needs to go for broke. It's been a good one, though, guys. Oh, uh, yeah, it's been a great fight. Yeah. A lot of fun. But, man, Travis Castellone, you got to give him credit, man. Excellent game plan tonight. Boxing and, weaving, boxing and moving, man. He's kind of fighting the fight of his life, you know. Yeah. I would say I, I haven't, I did not see any of his uh, previous losses, but I'll tell you, man, this is not a yeah. guy coming on, coming off a losing streak. And he is in Barry's hometown. It is not his hometown. Right, sure. but it's his turf. Yeah. And right now, oh. Brandberry getting tagged with shots. This is really, really, really good work from Castellone. Fanny Barry getting whacked. And I think you know, Brandberry wants to go for broke. He's gonna have to take risks and leave himself open. I mean, both men are giving it all. There's no doubt about oh, it. Oh, yeah, it's a great it, fight. It just doesn't seem like Barry has as much in the... I, I don't want to say the tank. It's just not throwing yeah. punches, you know? Yeah, I don't think it's a oh, stamina uh, issue with Barry. I think he's just having a that trouble... Was a, that was a beautiful flurry, by the way, that just yeah. backed up Castellano. It, well, it's like we said, when he throws, he has a lot of success. success. It just seems he's having a hard time pulling the trigger. I'll say this. Brandon Barry is taking a lot of punches tonight, yeah. and he is not buckled. No. Just yeah, he really keeps coming forward. He's cool as a cucumber. Yeah. Except for me, that one uppercut in round seven. I, didn't, I haven't really seen him get stunned too much. And he's tied up right before it. It's almost like a, a second pause when instead of going, he waits, and then he's tied before he's ready to go. Yep. Well, like oh. they say, when it comes to excessive clinching, it, it takes two to tango. Mm. So I'd say I think we're pretty much halfway through this round here, guys. We, uh, very, oh. Very, oh, another big shot there by Castellon. It's not, it's, the door is starting to close here for Brandon Berry. And he, you know, he waited too. I think he's waited too long. He's trying to see if he can get Castellone as a stationary target, and Castellone's just not letting him yeah. have a minute. Both men are really giving it hell. And yeah. a raucous, rocking crowd. Yeah, <laughs> I see Castellone. some. I think Castellone's made some fans tonight. I see a lot of. I see a lot of supporters on the Castellone side. Uh, they're into it. But at this point, Barry's kind of nodding and acknowledging that he's yeah. got tagged. There's no time for that right now. I mean, if anything, he should be throwing caution to the wind. He should be looking for a knockout. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. This is too. Right now. You're right. He's trying, but I, I, I really. But there he goes. I mean, he was just turning around there. This is one of the times where it's okay to forget about technique, forget about strategy, yeah. forget about boxing, and just throw I think, I, I everything. Think, and I'll say this: I think he's winning this round. It's close, but I think Brandon Berry might have this round. He took some big shots earlier. He did. Very close. I think it's definitely he's definitely uh, closing the oh, gap. Nice uppercut there by Barry. And ten then seconds. About ten seconds ten left seconds. here. Let's see, guys. Castellone. This is what he definitely amps oh, it up. Brandon Berry, oh, nice left hand, and Castellone uh, dives oh. in on him, and that's it. Ten rounds in the books. Wow. So I have this fight. Uh, 
I had this fight, I guess it would be uh, 97, 90, okay, so the point deduction, 96, 93 on my card. Okay. Seven rounds to three. Yeah, I got a 7-3. Seven, 7-3? Three. Seven, seven, three? Three. So I, I, I see I see it a, a 96-93 scorecard. Yeah. We'll have to see, guys. I, I think Castellone did everything. He We're looking at a replay right here. Definitely some gritty inside fighting here. We see Brandon Barry. So Not that's where Barry, I think, is going to have a lot of points to complain about him yeah. leaning, leading with the head. Yeah, he definitely led a lot with the head in the 10th round. What a great fight, though. What a great 10-round yep. fight. A lot of action, good energy in let's the place. See. I mean, hell of a way to end the great American, American boxing. Match. Yeah, let's, let's say it again, guys. Three consecutive weekend uh, Friday nights we did at this arena. The Castleton, thank you, everyone, that uh, allowed this to happen, everybody at the Castleton. Uh, I want to thank the entire crew of Boston Boxing Promotions, the cameramen, uh, the director, the sound. It's all done by uh, excellent people. They, do, they work yeah. very, very hard to give you a crystal clear stream. I think Tim Boxeo said it best, man. They, they, no one, they, you know, if you can just give me a crystal clear stream, I'll be a happy man. And that's what we try and do every single time out. Um, yeah, we're grateful that we had you here. Yeah. We it, really appreciate it, it's it. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you, Gray. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you, Scott. Oh, thank I, you, man. I certainly Likewise. hope to do it soon, and it's always oh. great to be here at the Castleton. And we want to thank again Peter and Nick DeSalvo, Peter Zimmer and Nick DeSalvo. They put Dave. so much blood, sweat, and tears to make these three shows happen, yes. to get them online, to make the cards happen. What they go through day in and, and day, day out, out yeah, it's, is, is it's a lot of work. Most people couldn't do it. It's very overwhelming, and it takes a special type of person to do it. And uh, just so thankful that they yeah. are in all our lives to provide this great boxing. Yes. Boston Boxing Promotion is definitely a promotion on the rise. There's talk about expansion in the coming year. We'll I'm really see. Excited yeah. To see what happens. I think I think we're gonna ramp it up. For, you know, we're gonna finish off with two great shows to end 2021, and then 2022, man, sky's the limit. I want to thank Matt and Shannon Simmons and the Mad Dog, Matt Nelson. Uh, for their awesome work today. Our crew is the best. I like that Matt put Mad Dog uh, as the nickname for himself. <laughs> um, but yes, they are a crew. Uh, listen, they do for three people, man. They put on a they hell of a, a production. They do a lot. They put in so much work. It's and I can tell you, man, it's it's, it's definitely, we're well, on the seat of our pants sometimes. The, the scores are coming. But yes, I think Pete Zimbor is Art ready has the belt. to announce these scorecards. Here we go. applause for a hell of a 10 round fight here in Windham tonight. Thank you. 10 hard fought rounds for both fighters you just don't see him like anymore. That was a throwback. After 10 hard fought rounds we go to the judges scorecards. Judges see the fight by scores of 96-93, 98-92 yeah. and 99-290. For your winner the unanimous decision, and now the NABA United States welterweight champion, Travis Castellon. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Travis Castellon comes to Whitham, New Hampshire on the road. We want you to have a safe ride home. Enjoy the remainder of your evening. We'll see you back here at the Castleton September 24th. Have a safe ride home, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, from Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale, Florida. Travis Castellone comes all the way uh, off the road. Um, and it was 96-93, 98-92, 99-92. Very competitive fight. Excellent match. Congratulations to Tra Travis Castellone, the new NABA welterweight champion. Oh, sorry, 99-90. <laughs> yeah, Thank you. And, and a hard-fought fight from Brendan Berry. You know, a bit of a heartbreak for him, yeah. no doubt. But he just wasn't busy enough at the end of the day. He put up a hell of a fight. Yes. But, you know, just a little more activity from him. And uh, congratulations to Castellone, who in many ways pulled off this upset. Big upset, you know? yeah. I think, I think we, we said it was uh, definitely 50-50, but he comes into uh, Brandon Barry's turf and takes the unanimous decision. Yeah. But guys, I just want to quickly summarize tonight's fight. We had winners, your boy Danny the Dog Robles, Chris, first round knockout. Another brutal first round knockout. There was talk of a broken rib, and I'm oh, excited oh. to see him return in the fall. He will be stepping up dramatically in competition, so I look forward to his career knockout puncher. Yes, we had Dan the Hamburger Cormier in a very competitive fight uh, against Josh Alvarado. Uh, and I think that was an excellent fight, Scott. Yeah, that was a good fight. Um, I was impressed with both of them being pro debut guys. They both, they look like they've done this before a few times, and you don't see that often from pro debuts. Yes, 
at Cody Kaboski, another guy from your gym, pulling yeah, off first round knockout. And it was nice to see him make his pro debut. He's a wonderful guy, and he, he can have an interesting career and to get that first one in the first round. It's always nice. D uh, Dustin Reinhold with a stoppage win, a great story there, 45 years old, going two straight wins for him now. Congratulations to Dustin. Jordan Yancey from South Paul Boxing and Fitness, first round knockout tonight over Tom Kenny. Nick Molina uh, coming back in action with a first Ooh, round stoppage win. 21 seconds in that 21 fight. seconds. I mean, he was, he was about uh, pretty close to the state record. Quick work. Ray Oliveira Jr. in a very fun fight with Jader Aulis, uh, de Oliveira. Amanda Pavone, I think a bit of a surprise, guys, held to a draw by a very motivated Jacob Pivot. Absolutely, Pavis. and that's a bit of a controversial fight. I think some people oh. would disagree with the scorecard, but great yes. fight. Run it back. Uh, Chris Jacobs, first round stoppage. I'm sure we'll see him soon. And Brendan Berry uh, fortunately falls in a unanimous decision defeat to Travis Castellon from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Again, 96-93, 98-92, 99-90. Great fight. Listen, guys, let's tell you, it was a privilege to get to call these shows, both of you, for the it, last couple of weeks. You know what this feels like right now? It feels like the end of the Titanic when, <laughs> when the musicians play and they look at each other when the ship's sinking and say, yes. it was a privilege, gentlemen. You know? <laughs> it I was. do think they play into the ocean, right? And we're not going to do that. We're not just going to keep talking No, I don't, we're not drowning today, right? No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> All right. So on behalf of the Boston Boxing Promotions crew, Pete Simbor, Nick DeSalvo, I, my name is Gray Johnson. I've been calling fights tonight with Chris J, Scott Sullivan, Mad Dog Matt Nelson doing uh, all the directing tonight. Matt the Postman Simmons behind the camera. And Shannon Simmons helping out as well. The Postman. Mike, sorry, Mike the Postman Simmons. Sorry, I got too excited there. And if Peter called that, he'd say, The Postman! And the Mad Dog. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to the Castleton New Hampshire State Athletic Commission. Everybody, you watching this and supporting us. Hey, we're back September 24th. We'll see you then. Take care.